Welcome to the Bracket Bash of the podcast. We take a bracket of 32, 64, 120 to more and banter our way down to a winner. I am your host this week, Freddie Fisher, and this is Chai. Chai, who is uh, only, in fact, talking about Brendo today. <laughs> and, of course, next there <laughs> is. The mouthy bastard. I'm back. I want to advertise Kruger, Voorhees 2024. We're going to take a stab at it. Let's get let's get them up there on the board. Put them in your ballots. Let's go. She's advertising previous, the titties. <laughs> and a previous host but, uh, from last week, and not this week. I get to finish this one out. We also have... Oh, Freddie, we know we like you finishing here. Um, who? <laughs> Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little feisty today. This is, this is your feisty senator, uh, Bubbles, here. Your, I guess, silliest bastard of the day. And this is... We also have a returning guest on our panel today. She is a huge Disney fan, so we like her on the show. It is Nancy. Nancy, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. I was... I, I'm sorry. I'm a little, like, tired. <laughs> I was telling you earlier, but, like... I had a Disney quick ready to go and I forgot it. <laughs> so <laughs> it will come back to me five minutes later. Probably. Spe speaking of coming back, Hercules won last week's episode, which means it goes on to the finals this week. It will be facing one of these movies from the 2000s and beyond. So this is half of this are 2000s and beyond Disney movies. The other half of, of course, are Pixar movies which we did not include last week, even though some of them are actually in the 90s as well, just like Hercules. Before we start this, we have a couple of rules today. Number one, we do not have past the parcel going on because as you can see on the screen, there's five of us, four girls and one guy. I'm a very, very, very lucky dude today. But we also have, <laughs> speaking of that one, we also have blowing your load, which since we vote round Robin style, if you're one of the first people to go, you don't want to be one of the first people to go. You can blow your load. That means you're going last. If somebody else blows their load after you, you are no longer going last. You're going directly before them and so on and so forth. The other one, of course, is although he is not here today, he also gives his presence. And that is Q is Q's rule. We also call it the steal a vote, the ultimate bastard move up into the quarter final uh, up into including the quarterfinal matchups, you can steal somebody's vote as long as they have not voted yet. But you can only do this one time per show, so make sure it is it happens before then, and it is as vicious as possible. Last week, I really fucked people over uh, by taking out Lion King. Oh. Uh, if I remember right, it was Robin Hood who beat out Lion King. Okay. And I, I like Robin Hood better than Lion King. So. Yeah. That's... Yeah. So, so did I, and so did Q, and Jess was super fucking pissed. <laughs> it made me laugh. I do start us off today, though, and our opening matchup, we're starting on the D Disney side. We have Zootopia versus Brother Bear. Oh. I know. It's kind of a hard one. I've never seen Brother Bear until this week. Oh, I thought you were just about to end it on You've Never Seen It, and I'm like, Freddy! Out of I all these movies on this entire Jeffrey. list, the only movie, the, the entire list today, out of the 32 movies we have, the only one I haven't seen prior to this week was Brother Bear. So I've seen everything else that is on this list, including some of the uh, random ones. The only one last week I haven't seen was uh, Melody Time. Everything else I actually had. Oh, Melody Time's an interesting one. Melody yeah. Time, yeah, all, all of the ones that are um, the bunch of the little movies smashed together, mm -hmm. they're interesting. There is, uh, last week I, I, I brought up a couple facts. I'm going to give you, I, I'm going to try to give you one for each movie that, that I have found in the last week by doing research because I love Disney movies. You guys know I love Disney movies. And there's this one. Uh, for Zootopia, the, one of the drafts on there had had over 9 million CGI hairs on it. Wow. So shout out to the creators on that one. Of course, Brother Bear. I enjoyed the movie. However, I will be voting against it today. This is my vote's going to go for Zootopia because, again, fuck Phil Collins. 
That's it. Phil, Phil Collins did the uh, music, which I actually kind of did enjoy the, some of the songs from Brother Bear, but and the movie was great. But Zootopia is fucking funny. And there's multiple parts in Zootopia that if you ever heard the rule never freeze, like never pause a Disney movie, mm -hmm. Zootopia is kind of the cornerstone of that one because there's certain scenes in that you just don't want to pause. You never want to really pause a Disney movie because you never know what you're going to get. So my vote today will be going for Zootopia. Shy. So I haven't actually seen all of Zootopia, but it's been a long time since I've seen Brother Bear and it made me very sad. And the parts from Zootopia I have seen, I enjoy that much more. So Zootopia gets my vote. Gets another one, Jamie. Whoop, sorry. Um, here I am just trying to figure out what I'm doing with my life. I'm not sure. I'm running into brick walls. Um, because <laughs> I've never seen Brother Bear from beginning to end. I have seen some of it. I didn't mind it, but I felt like it was too much of a goody two shoes Berenstain Bear, and it wasn't my style. So Zootopia is more of my my style for the comedy and just the little things they did. And, like you said, pausing on them is kind of funny. So Zootopia. One thing about that Brother Bear on that one, because you mentioned it being kind of, kind of cutesy. Brother Bear is violent as fuck. It is. Like it is violent as hell. There's, there's fight scenes in in the movies where and with like spears and a whole bunch of other stuff and people falling off of glaciers and just. The, the only thing they never really show a dead body in that movie, which is no. it's a Disney film, they, so you kind of figured as much. They try to make it look cute, though, which is weird. I guess it just didn't. It's a it Disney didn't grab movie. We it's a Disney movie. Like, what? I know, I know, but it no, didn't grab the, grab the blood splattered against the wall. <laughs> Disney movie. <laughs> I mean, they kind of did the same thing with like Coraline. So it's it's a it's a horror movie, but they it's a cartoon. So that Coraline is not a Disney movie. It's a. Uh, uh, I can't remember who the fuck did, did it, but it, probably, it like, probably oh, Universal it like wasn't that. that good. It wasn't Tim Burton, was it? Like it was. No, it movie. was it was the guy who actually directed Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, Selick Selkirk. I can't remember, but so that explains people, a lot. Everyone thinks that Tim Burton directed Nightmare Before Christmas. He did he not. Didn't. Um, it was another guy who is either Henry Selick, Henry Selkirk, Henry some something with a cell in it. And I think it's Selleck because he keeps he, he keeps getting confused with uh, Tom Selleck, like yeah. he's Tom Selleck's brother or something like that. But yeah, no, it was so, this, it was Tim Burton's story. It yeah. was Tim Burton's story, and Henry and a lot of the people who worked on it were friends or contemporaries of Tim Burton, but he was not the director, and it, it became and it was credited <laughs> as being Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. So that they could popularize and Tim Burton's popularity at the time. Well, either way, it's a damn good movie. It is. Bubbles, <laughs> Zootopia, or Brother Bear. I love Zootopia. Like I will go and actively seek it out on Disney Plus to just kind of watch it, just to watch it. I love all the little Easter eggs that they have in there. I love finding new little Easter eggs. I try to avoid like Reddit and stuff like that just so I could find them on my own because I enjoy that quite a bit. Um, however, I also love and will seek out Brother Bear as well. And it's so like, and it just, and it's really weird. I seek it out when I need a good cry, but I have to have like a reason to cry because you know, if you don't have a reason, you're just a weirdo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And so, but I, I love Brother Bear. I love that they did not do like the, uh, the Hollywood thing at, and bring like the mom back or the brother back or anything like they left them dead. Like, thank you for that. Okay. That just kind of went against like most things that we watch. Cause usually with Disney, they do like that Disney Hollywood happy ending, like, yeah. Oh, everything's fine and rainbows and stuff. And I mean, it had a happy ending. It just was not one of those expected 
endings that you get so often of, oh, everybody just comes back to life and it's not realistic. What Disney movie has bringing dead people back to life? Frozen. Just right yeah. off the top of my head. She wasn't dead, though. She was just frozen. She was frozen. I mean, like, you're a fucking ice cube. Like, how is that well, not I mean, uh, what What's I'm his name sure in... in oh, well, I was going to say, Flint, like, Flynn Rider, I guess, was... Okay, Flint... Yeah. Flynn Rider... A Flynn Rider, I, I I would attest to, Snow but he wasn't White. dead yet either. He was Aurora. dying. Well, Aurora, Aurora was sleeping. not she dead. She was asleep. She, she was, was sleeping. So she was in a coma. It was a coma. <laughs> um. All these so Snow White, I believe. Snow White. It, if you if you watch the movie, I also believe that it's she Luke, Luke appears Luke. like she's dead, but she's not actually. Oh well, yeah, that's because of the white. The, the white yeah. skin though she just kind of appears to be dead the only <laughs> like but they still uh, come back and i mean like everybody they comes survive back. everybody no like i love the fact that like no we want to see somebody drop dead bye and it was almost <laughs> like a cultural goodbye too because i mean they really did uh put a lot of things culturally like uh with i don't know if i want to call it native american because i don't think that was america that they were in i think that was no, like, they're so they're in um like they're in the northern part of canada um so they're like northern part of canada or uh like alaska Alaska's area time. yeah so you so you couldn't tell from the moose yeah well, well i'll well, get into the moose in a second Wyoming in montana and shit so they could have been up there but no i just don't think it looked like American landscape. So I figured Canadian. I just assumed. So, what's, was what's, right so what's your vote there, love? I'm going with Brother Bear. I know that it didn't win. I'm glad that Zootopia is moving forward. But I fucking love it. And I know you have a distaste for Phil Collins, but he kind of slapped on that just like Tarzan. Tell everybody I'm on my way. And I'll send him like, me and my husband sing that randomly. <laughs> All right, finish this. Finish this out there, Nancy. Is it, is it Brother Bear or Zootopia? All right, so I'm, I'm. I am. You guys made it very easy for me for voting Zootopia through because I love Zootopia. It's a really great modern movie, but I have a really deep, um, sentimental and personal connection to Brother Bear, and I just. And it was one of those things where. As much as I know on paper, Zootopia is kind of a bit of the better movie. To me, Brother Bear is one of my favorites. Um, I have, through me and my dad, and this is where I said, hold on the moose, because I'll talk about the moose. Because me and my dad, my dad's favorite animal is moose. And my favorite real-life animal is moose. Also, growing up, my father had a Christmas tradition with us. And it will relate back to Brother Bear is my father had uh, two things that he would always play, two comedy routines he'd always play in the car on Christmas Eve with all four kids that were definitely not appropriate for, for my age, which was like from two all the way up to like 10. And that was Cheech and Chong's Christmas. And then the McKenzie Brothers' 12 Days of Christmas. And... I would grow up listening to the McKenzie brothers for my dad. It's my dad loved the McKenzie brothers and, and we've listened to them all the time. And for those who don't know, the actors who play the McKenzie brothers are the ones who play the two moose, Rut and Took. And so when my father found out and he found out it was his favorite animals being played by the McKenzie brothers, he was so excited. I was excited. I have a movie poster of Rotten Toque saying the moose are on the loose. I have a little toque stuffed animal. Um, I have a moose charm necklace my father had bought me that we called Rut. Um, and my, I actually made that year, my, for my, my father for Father's Day, I'm sorry, I'm going to cry. I made him a card that is literally, what you say we celebrate by going getting some malted hearts on some barley leaves, eh? And I gave that to my dad as a Father's Day. That that line made me laugh. It really did. I'm sitting there like, dude, you're talking about beer during a children's movie. 
It's like, my, that's awesome. <laughs> my father, uh, he's this big old um, former Air Force uh, captain yeah. from Boston. Doesn't, doesn't cry, like very serious guy. He belly laughed in a movie theater in suburban Boston at that line. He just belly laughed. And me and my mom are like, what? <laughs> It's his, it's his favorite line, and it's that movie has a really deep sentimental connection to me and my dad. So, like, I, I have to vote it through every time. Well, sadly, this time it did not go through Zootopia. Yeah. Moves so on three to two on this one. Shy starts us off. We're going from a uh, little bit from a modern and a not so modern cartoon on this one to two completely modern cartoons we have encanto versus princess and the frog oh what the fuck freddy yeah i was gonna say fuck you freddy for uh granted i i will take all 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 the blame you guys want but as i said last week all of these movies were delegated to where they're at on the matchup list by rotten tomatoes they have all these ranked where where they are so Let's just be clear here, though, Freddie. You had every opportunity to change them up, and you chose didn't. not to. I know I didn't because uh, this was a the, personal choice, and I feel like it's almost a personal attack. The thing with the this though is that a majority of these movies I absolutely love, so there's no way I could effectively create matches just to go just to go for me. I couldn't. So I just kind of have to go with what it is. So do you. Shay. It's in Canto all the way. Bruno gets a nod on that one. Jamie. Um, I'm going to go with how I was excited and watched the movie multiple times when I was younger. Princess and the Frog. I don't know why that one really did stand out to me back then. And I'm going to vote for it. Gets a, a vote. Harley's in comments, by the way. She is also going for Princess and the Frog, which means, Bubbles, you actually have somebody in comments today when you Yay! can't make a decision. <laughs> Speaking of Bubbles, the Bubbles yeah. vote. Is it Princess and the Frog or Encanto? Oh, this one is so difficult um, because I do. I love both of these movies. Um, I love that they kind of like... They have, they created a new American princess, I guess. And so it just kind of, every little girl's dream, like, oh, maybe I could be a princess, even though we don't live in a country with princesses. Um, oh, but I love Encanto. Like, there's so many good messages, and it's not revolved around a dude, which is really awesome. It's it's really family-based and um, well, I mean, really, I guess it kinda really it kind of is wrapped around the dude, just not your I mean, like a love dude. interest dude. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't a love interest. Like, I, I kind of dig that they didn't go that direction really with it. Like, there was that little bit in there. But, I mean, it really wasn't a significant part of the movie. Um, healing family trauma, on the other hand, that's pretty awesome. And so, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and go with Encanto on that. Because I think it did have a lot of really good messages. <laughs> Encanto gets a vote, Nancy. So I, I, I will, I will shout out Encanto that like Encanto is incredible, and I will stand by Encanto, and I will defend it. Um, on another thing of it being a family movie that talks about like family trauma and like really has a good message around it. As someone who's seen it in my own family and how it's affected, it how it's affected the children when they're grown ups even to their much older ages and seeing how it affects with my, my husband's family with stuff that has happened. And I really loved Encanto for that, but I have to go with my first ever childhood crush, Keith David, the shadow man, princess and the frog. Cause I have watched <laughs> that movie so many times and I'm sorry, make Keith David the villain. Oh yeah. Uh, bringing up Keith David on, on this one who plays Dr. Facilier mm -hmm. who's actually one of the weird names I can actually pronounce correctly oddly enough 
uh, theory on this one is that Dr. Facilier might be, uh, cause he, he did, he did a set a line where, uh, I'm, I'm a royal I'm a, myself on my mother's side. Yeah. I'm, I'm a royal myself on my mother's side. There's a theory out there that Dr. Facilier might be, um, uh, Mama Odie's son mm. just chose dark magic instead of the light magic on that one. Has we need proven, a villain origin story right away, Disney. Thank you. There you go. Listen, uh, Disney, you're making a villain's park. Maybe, maybe you could give us some villain origin stories too that aren't your live actions. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you some trivia here as well. Uh, Tiana was left-handed. Okay. Who is the only other Disney main character? So they have their the, they're the main character in the movie, left-handed female. Is it Belle? It is not. Okay. Is it, is it Cinderella when she's like scrubbing on the floor and stuff? No. Is it is it a princess? First off, I'm not going to answer that one. Because that, that does narrow it down. My thoughts are either Jane from Tarzan or Mulan. I'm thinking are you nodding? Mulan. Was it one of those? Am I close? Am I like... I, is it Mulan? I, yeah, I, th I think... I think it's is Mulan. it Mulan because we had that argument on whether or not she was a princess or not? Which is the reason why I wasn't going to tell you if it was, it was a princess or not. According, according is, to how much he is. But it, I don't it, see how. It is Mulan. Mulan is the only other left-handed. Uh, it did say when I looked this up. It did say the only other left-handed princess. So, according to Disney Wiki, uh, granted, it's also Wiki, which means uh, anybody can correct that one. But I haven't seen a thing that goes against it. However, there's that one uh, on Encanto. Encanto had the first ever female lead with glasses. Yes, represent. Mm -hmm. I'm not wearing mine today. I can't wear them because I have light in my eyes and a glare on the screen. Uh, also, shout out from another previous movie, also on this list as well. The brown boot plant from Wally -E is also in Canto as well. So they little stuff to look out for on that one. However, it is a tie breaking decision coming down to me on this particular matchup. I. I'm a fan of villains. Um, the only real villain in Encanto is the grandmother, and I can actually I can kind of see where she's coming from. She's just trying to hold the family together, not wanting to give up her seat. Whatever, it's fine. However, she needs to work uh, through her own trauma. Friends, yeah. friends on the other side is my number three villain song of all time. Yes. Uh. And What's your it's, number one? Uh, we, we should talk about this last week, too. Uh, poor Unfortunate Souls. Mm -hmm. Little Mermaid. Good choice. Mm -hmm. So, and we were talking about the second one last week, too, and I can't off for life me. I can't remember what the fuck that was. So. Is it Be Prepared? No, I think it was uh, uh, Want to Be Like You from... Mm. From the Jungle Book, because we're having a conversation about how that's not an actual villain song. I'm like, no, 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 it's a villain song. Louis is a villain. Yeah. It's not. It's an upbeat it. villain song. Here's the thing: is do we count? We don't talk about Bruno as a villain song because it definitely it sounds like one, and we think he's a villain. But then we find out really quickly. It's, quick not, and it's not, not sung. It's not sung by a villain. True. That that's the point. It's it's but people talking about a villain. But Crow would count as a villain song because it's about the villain. Is that that's, that's the thing? That I I'm, I'm talking about a villain song. Is the villain is is the song from a villain? Uh, yeah. Trust in me, for instance. Love is an open door. Is sung by the villain, even though we don't know he he's the villain yet. So, which is one of my favorite reveals of all time. So, I'm going to go with Princess and the Frog on this one. With shout out to Harley, she is going also going for Princess and the Frog on this particular one as well. Gets our vote. It will move on. Jamie starts this one off. Jamie, is it the Tigger movie or Moana? Oh, fuck you. Okay, 
Um, those are both great movies. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go Moana. Moana gets a nod. Bubbles. I like the Tigger movie, but I don't love it. Moana, on the other hand, I love Moana. And for like all of the first year that my daughter had found television, that's what she wanted to watch. So Moana it is. Moana gets another one. Nancy. Yeah, so I I I was at the right age for the Tigger movie when it came out. I remember seeing it in theaters. Also, I remember the very adorable um, McDonald's Happy Meal toys that came with that movie. They were little they were little keychains of the characters wearing uh, their Tigger hoodies. Um, adorable. If if anyone can ever find one on Etsy or eBay, um, but Moana to me is far better in so many things from, um, I'm going to mispronounce his name, uh, Jermaine Clements playing the crab that has horrified a whole yeah. bunch of children in my family. Um, and, uh, to Tomatoa? Tomatoa, yeah. To sure. the amazing music by uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda, who is mm -hmm. someone that I love deeply. I have so this I soundtrack have to... in my car. I have the CD in my car that I listen to regularly. <laughs> so I never got to play this character, but I have an original character from a um, comic book concept that I had that I was that I would do cosplays as these characters and stuff just for fun. And I actually used use the song "You're Welcome" in my um, cosplay competition thing with him because he's like a he's a Disney and Marvel addict, so. And he is a demigod, so he c will say you're welcome to people. <laughs> Sorry. No. Moana, Moana gets that nod off of that one. I... <sighs> few facts. Leaving this one up. Let's, 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 go the, let's go the Tigger movie real quick. The original trailer included the song Semi-Charmed Semi Kind of Life, which as a 90s child, I, I know this song back back and forward uh but it was changed because they found out the song is about crystal meth <laughs> they should have left it I, so there's that moana um and a completely unrelated instance but i did find this funny there is a porn star in like uh italy or something like that named moana that predates yep. this movie yep. <laughs> So, all right, which I still found was funny, but I'm gonna go with Moana just for the simple fact of Alan Tudyk. Yeah, oh, hey, hey, thank you, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, not hey, hey, but Al uh, Alan Tudyk will probably be getting my vote in a couple movies because he is in a lot. By the way, uh, I still got to put a date to it because we were booking all the way out until I think June now of our calendar goes, but Alan Tudyk is definitely getting his own bracket because there's a litany of movies and shows and stuff that he's in. There's at least five on this list today. As he deserves. So Yes, as he deserves. Two of them, that, that's, the, that's the same character. I will be going for Moana on this one. It's a possible sweep heading down to Shy. Shy, is it Moana or Tiger movie? Moana all the way. Moana all the way. Gives a five to zero on that one. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> Fun fact, my son loves the soundtrack for Moana. Unless it's the actual Moana singing, he makes me sing it. <laughs> my son is also the only child in our family of all the grandkids who is not terrified of uh, Tamatoa. <laughs> but he's scared of Moana singing. <laughs> What one of my favorite things is I, I'm a, as you guys know I'm a huge huge wrestling fan, and The Rock, who of course plays Maui in this movie, came came back as a heel uh, around WrestleMania season this year, and uh, really, he, yeah, he beat the living crap out of Cody Rhodes, who was going to be 
going to pick, going to be the uh, champion ap- he, he probably uh, deserved ap- it. after Mania. After like a two year type thing with with Roman Roman Reigns getting screwed over multiple times. Anyway, he took a uh, the the Rock took a weight belt and just beat the living crap out of him, and came back like the next Thursday or whatever, and uh, looked directly into the camera and do doing the entire promo and looked at the crowd and goes, "What can I say? But you're welcome." But actually, kind of sang it s- softly. On that one, and I'm sitting there, going like, "Dude, that's hear the crowd cold. going, yes. Yes. <laughs> what can I say? But <laughs> you're welcome." <laughs> so yeah, uh, Moana moves on five to zero on that one. That man is a legend. Oh. Hey, guess what? That was a sweep, bitches. Bitches. I feel bad saying that because I only got here. <laughs> All right. Bubbles, I'm going to start you off with an easy one. All right. At least an easy one for me. Is it Rhea and the Dragon? Sorry, Rhea and the Last Dragon or Meet the Robinsons? <laughs> um, I did enjoy Rhea and the Last Dragon. Um, my kids enjoyed it. But Meet the Robinsons? Like, that one was so... I feel like that was one of the last... Like it was so underrated. Positive, too. like a positive feeling for the future, kind of like an excitement for it. Like I remember being in school and they're like, oh, imagine what 2020 is gonna look like. And here we are driving like bubble cars and like things like that. And I feel like Meet the Robinsons really like captured that imagination that I remember doing so young in school. And then after that, like, I don't know what happened, but now it's all zombies in the end of the world. Um, Meet the Robinsons definitely gets mine, though. Um, I did, There's really not anything in there that I don't love about Meet the Robinsons. Which is why I said it's kind of a shoe in for this one. Nancy. Yeah, so uh, for Raya, 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 Raya in The Last Dragon, sorry had a moment there um it's a movie fine it's good me and my husband have enjoyed it i i had to like i've watched it once or twice i don't really remember moments from it honestly and i've seen it recently but meet the robinsons other hand meet the robinsons has like a moment yes exactly for years i was in my i was a young uh second youngest of five kids and I was 13 when it came out. And I still remember all of my siblings going around the house going, I have a big head, but little arms. I don't think you about this plan out last year. <laughs> <laughs> and like, we would do that. And we were all teenagers. And the fact that that movie just had these banger lines, the Tom Selleck joke that just <laughs> yeah. gets my mom is a joke that gets my mom laughing in, in a Disney movie is like fantastic. The fact that like my husband has watched this movie with me for the first time in recent years, and he was like, "Why have I never seen this? This is funny." Um, and that's my thing. It's like I'm I'm sorry. I wish all the best to that movie. It had a really dumb luck, Ryan, the Last Dragon, but. Mm-hmm. Against Meet the Robinsons? No way. Meet the Robinsons. Meet the Robinsons gets my vote on, on here as well. I'm going to give Ray and the Last Dragon its, it's due, though. Aquafina, who is probably one of my favorite comedians out there right now, um, voices the dragon on that one. So I I absolutely love, love that one. Um, but I can swim really fast. <laughs> she was so confident in that and it was beautiful that is her, that was probably my favorite line for no no reason like I had no reason to live so rent free in my head but every time I go swimming I just can't help it I'm like I can swim really fast so confidently 
everyone in that movie had some, there were some great performances from everyone, including from her. Like, she was probably has some of the moments where, like, the few moments of that movie where, like, I was like, oh, yeah, this is good. Like, and I'm nodding along and laughing was, like, definitely her. <laughs> For everybody out there at Spotify Land who doesn't know who Aquafina is off of her uh, off of her face or name or whatever, uh, one of the most familiar things that I could possibly think of is that she was in the, mo- in the recent Little Mermaid movie, the live action one, where she played the seagull. Scuttle, uh, sing the like, scuttle song. Yeah, got my scuttle butt, scuttle butt. Yeah, I still love that song. Um, but Alan Tudyk, also in this movie, plays Tuk Tuk or Tuk Tuk, however the fuck you pronounce that. Uh, however, Alan Tudyk does not get my vote on this one. It is definitely Meet the Robinsons. The two main boys. I love this fact. The two main boys, they they got replaced halfway through the movie because they're both of their voices changed. So it wouldn't fit right. So they had to recast those. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lewis and uh, Wilbur. Those are two ones that had, that, mm-hmm. that had to be cra- recast for that one, but me, the Robinson mainly for that line is the entire, I have big head and little arms gets my vote. I can't help but go ahead and vote for this one. It gets to win as well off of that one. Shy. Oh. Frogs too. Oh, the frogs are amazing. Ray and the Last Dragon and Meet the Robinsons. So I actually didn't care to watch Fry and the Last Dragon, um, but I will regularly just sit and watch Meet the Robinsons whenever. So it's definitely Meet the Robinsons. I I didn't know Meet the Robinsons was a Disney movie. I thought it was somebody else who made it for some reason. I have no idea why. It's just it didn't get it didn't get the play or the massive like media ability that that Mm -hmm. other Disney movies did so i thought it was like a like a dreamworks or something like that but and it's shot differently too so there's that there are Uh, several robinsons gets another one jamie finish this one out is meet the robinsons or raya and the last dragon oh it's gonna be meet the robinsons five to zero moves on to the next round bubbles what is that it's a sweep, bitches. And Nancy starts us off. And Nancy starts us off with a playing matchup on this one. Nancy, is it Toy Story 1 or Toy Story 2? It's like telling me to pick my children. I know, right? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, brother. Too bad my son's not here. I just tell him to pick one. <laughs> Uh, so here's the thing is I am, I am the really like the right prime age where right when Toy Story came out, I was four. And so that was when I was starting to go into like seeing movies and stuff. Kind of giving away my age, but oh well. Um, But so anyway, and so then I was also the right age, like right along the age of Andy when Toy Story Three came out, two came out, and three, but that's another story. But so I love both of those. And also for me as a kid, the Toy Story 2 movie, especially the whole scene with the Woody's Roundup, just captured my attention. Toy Story, I love Toy Story 1 and I owe everything to it and it's iconic. But like Toy Story 2 just like had me like, whoa. And I still am dying for them to make Woody's Roundup as a Disney Plus show. Please, please just give us Woody's Roundup. Do not make it with actual puppets, please, for me so I can actually watch it. But, like, I would love, I would love to see that as a show. So I guess I'm going to have to go with Toy Story 2. Toy Story 2 gets a nod off of that one. Also, fun fact, my I probably had to vote for Toy Story 2 because my husband um, had told me that he was bullied in school for looking like Sid. <laughs> and then my son goes to me and says, I don't like the Toy Story with the scary daddy. I'm like, oh, which one is that? Is it Toy Story 1? Uh, Toy Story 1, my one of my favorite... One of the people who played it in the Toy Story movies is, of course, Tim Allen. Yes. Played Buzz Lightyear. And if you notice when they're in 
Buzz's room, a, um, a toolbox falls on him. And it says Benford Tools on it, which is a shout out to, of course, the show Home Dude, Improvement. <laughs> Always yeah. makes me laugh on that one. Uh, Toy Story 2. I'm going to vote for Toy Story 2 on this one as well, just because I believe in maternity leave. Okay, I'm getting some really weird faces on this. This is the reason why. 90% of Toy Story 2 was lost due to a computer outage at uh, Pixar at the time. Pixar was a gro grown company, whatever. Um, so they they lost a majority of this movie, which means it wasn't going to come out, which also means we don't get Toy Story 2 or Toy or sorry, we don't get Toy Story 3 or anything else besides that. Um, the reason why, but the only reason they got to make it is because one of the people who was on maternity leave took the movie home with them to work on. So the only copy they had, they saved because a woman was having a child. So shout out, not only to her, shout out to the baby for being conceived. And uh, sh shout out to Toy Story 2, which gets my vote. Okay. Shy. Can I say something? Can I put? Feel free. Okay. <laughs> okay, first off, shout out to us irresponsible moms that have to take things like that home. Okay. <laughs> I um, recently saved my brother-in-law by being super irresponsible. I was supposed to get... Um, like co2 for his paintball gun because he was doing a photo shoot with his daughter he did not in fact get paintballs they were very much a solid plastic <laughs> and because i was irresponsible and forgot to go and get it like the the photo shoot didn't happen like it was supposed to and so he's like okay it's cool and this is how we found out it was plastic is like he was like we'll just pop them open and just like have just paint everywhere you know like and it was not paint so shout out to irresponsible moms that have to take their work home um, <laughs> and um, and who don't go get CO2 for paintball guns. All right. Uh, Toy Story 2 is two up on this one. Shy, is it Toy Story 2 or Toy Story 1? So um, there, there might be some backlash, but I don't care for the Toy Story movies at all. Um, but if I had to pick, I would go for two. <laughs> Gets another one, Jamie. I like them both. I really don't care which one moves on. So I'm just going to go with Toy Story 1 because if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have two. <gasps> Messing up that sweet. Bubbles, finish this out. Mm, I'm going to go ahead and go with um, one on this one. Just for the tea party with Miss Nesbitt. <laughs> I love some of the callbacks on that one. <laughs> Toy Story 2 moves on to the first round. We'll be facing another in the first round matchup. Real quick, I'm going to go ahead and do the other um, playing matchup we have. And it looks like I start that one off. We have either Wreck It Ralph or Ralph Breaks the Internet. Um, I can't give Alan Tudyk to vote on this one because Alan Tudyk is in both of these playing the same character. So, uh, that kind of gives shout out to him. However, Wreck-It Ralph in the first one, two things. One, Felix's address is, uh, 120501, which for all your Disney fans out there is also Walt Disney's birthday. Hmm. So... Shout out to little stuff like that. Uh, the donuts are cops. Which I still think is fucking funny. Rec, uh, when Ralph Breaks the Internet. Uh, I, I, I'm going to go for, for Ralph Breaks the Internet. Just for the simple fact that I believe in the line. Uh, comparison is the thief of joy. And that's pretty much what that movie is trying to teach people. So I'm going to go with that one on that one. Shy, is it uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet or Wreck-It Ralph? I'm, I'm going to have to go with just Wreck-It Ralph on that one. Get some nod, Jamie. 
I absolutely did like a whole theme to my <clears throat> Halloween stuff and my bags and all the fun things. And it was Wreck-It Ralph. I, I love that movie. Love it. Love Fix-It Felix. If that game's at the arcade, that's where you'll find me. Bubbles. Um, I absolutely love both of these movies, actually. Um, you know what? I am going to go with Wreck-It Ralph 2 on this because in the Disney princess se scene, they got all of the Disney princesses' voices that are still with us to voice each of those characters. I dig that. That is awesome. And I'm so glad that they chose to participate. Wreck-It Ralph 2 is my vote. Okay, so you mean uh, just for clarification and audio land, is it Wreck It Ralph? Uh, the breaks the internet. Sorry. Okay, let's say Wreck It Ralph two could be two as uh, also. Not awesome. to go that house. <laughs> Which means um, it's a tie break decision coming down to Nancy. Nancy, in this situation, since we know who's facing in the next round or in round one. Do you want to know who's facing in round one? Sure. It is either Wreck It Ralph or Ralph breaks the internet. We'll be facing Bolt. And round one. Oh. I mean, it doesn't make my choice easier because I know what I'm voting. With that mashup. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to have to go with Wreck It Ralph. I, I think just basically one first Alan Tudyk, uh, I think that's like the first Alan Tudyk Disney animated performance. And it was also the whole. Um, the whole backstory of, I'm not sure if you know this, Freddie, or you had this for trivia, but in an interview, he said that uh, his agent was talking to Disney and they said they were looking for a, um, oh, I had his name and I lost it, but the guy who played uh, the Mad Hatter, an impression of him. Uh, and they wanted it, and they said, oh, can Alan do that? His agent says, oh yeah, he can do that. And then Alan is told this by his agent, goes, I have never done that impression in my life. <laughs> and then he just goes in there and does a perfect impression to the point where in the Disney 100 animation he's doing the Mad Hatter so like we gotta I gotta vote for Wreck-It Ralph and for the first appearance of King Candy um which is another iconic Disney villain also known as Turbo by the way uh yeah, Wreck-It Ralph moves on to the first round Shy Starts us off on this one, going back to the board. Is it Up or Luca? I'll, I'll have to give it to Up on that one, specifically for the dog. My name Smart. is Doug. Jamie. Up or who? Luca. Yeah, I, I'm. That's not ringing a bell. But Up is one of my favorite movies. I, I am going to start as a new scrapbook that's going to be a, all of my adventures and just I love doing that stuff. And so seeing that movie and just all the little ties to that and then how much the grumpy old man loves the cute little pudgy boy. I love it. I love it all. And Kevin. <laughs> up, up gets a vote. Bubbles. I love Up. I love that it has one of the saddest beginnings to any movie. Um, I love that it touched on fertility issues for those women that are and men that have fertility issues and like kind of what it, it is a hard thing and just showing that they were there for each other through it and stuck with it because often it does not end like that. That was awesome to see. Uh, <laughs> But, um, oh my God, now that I just got talking about up, now I forgot what the other one was because I was going to actually be my vote. Like, Luca. Luca. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I don't know why I forgot that. But Luca, that's a coming of age movie for young boys. And it is so fun and it is so cute. And I love that, like, when they're underwater, it has that, like, underwater garbly sound in the background. I don't know if anybody else has, like, picked up on it, but that was, that's fun. And, like, the, the fish are st stuck in the sky and that's what makes the stars like how cute is that uh luca's gonna get my vote on this one 
Nancy. Oh, so I feel like dissing is just going to be like an ongoing revolving door of difficult choices today. Oh, yeah. Uh, especially with this one is unlike with, with Raya. So this is a Luca is another movie of that time where there, especially with Pixar, Pixar had three wonderful movies around that time that acts four actually four wonderful movies that have all gotten forgotten or rampled over. And I think we need to talk about how amazing these films are, especially now that um, Pixar is like, oh, well, obviously sequels are more profitable. Um, but anyhow, so I have to just say that like Luca is incredible and I love Up. I am very uh, attached to Up. My, uh, another, another one where I love that dog so much. I identify with that dog so much. He's one of the Disney characters I get compared to. And two, there's two characters in that movie I get compared to. I get compared to Doug and I get compared to Kevin, the bird. <laughs> so like, I, I, I love Up, but I wanna give, I, I, I wanna give Luca some love because it one, it looks unlike any other Pixar movie. It, you can tell the director's heart and soul was into it. And like Maya Rudolph as the mom was iconic casting. So let's, let's give it to Luca. She has the perfect sassy mom voice. Absolutely. Yes. And then Sassy Baron Cohen comes in as this like, weird, <laughs> creepy uncle that he doesn't want to go with. I mean, that casting is iconic. It's oh, perfect. They, they knew what they were doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, All yeah. right. So I'm tie-breaking decision on this one. Um, fun facts on this one, as far as up goes. According to science, it takes 20 to 30 million balloons to lift a house. That is the only fun fact that I can come up with that particular movie. However, Luca, one of my favorite fun facts on this one is Alberto, the person who played Alberto, um, did all of his lines in his closet at his mom's house due to COVID. Um, Drops. I don't like Up. I don't. I, I think it's it's sad for a reason, and I appreciate it. But, like, I also think it's a little bit... It's meant for people who is... Who is that type of topic is meant for people who are a little bit older than what it's geared towards. For me. So it's a kind of a loss in translation vibe for me. I love the continuity of Luca. I love the comedy in, of Luca. I love the simple fact that the dad who goes, uh, oh, I can fix this entire thing, just goes up there and starts shoving kids in the pool uh, type thing. I, I, I love the entire Romeo and Juliet type vibe that they have in this movie too. The entire crossing bonds and realizing that we're not all, that the, the, uh, the other side can can be learned from. And sometimes you just want to evolve of what you're going off of. So my my vote is for Luca knocking out up in round in round one. I am super Fair. surprised by this. Actually, so am I. Like, I thought I was going to be in the minority voting for Luca, but I absolutely everything about that whole like if you've ever raised just kids in general and like watching their friendship bonds and the like when they're sitting there and they are together putting that scooter together and it like falling apart and they're like, it's okay. We're just going to fix it. Like, like when you're not involved with the kids and like their little projects and stuff, when they like fuck it up and stuff and they have to figure it out on their own, it is, it is as beautiful as it is displayed in that movie. It is such a fun and it's hilarious to watch. And then like, when you look back or you like, think about it later, you're like, Oh my God, that was an amazing experience. And I'm so glad that I let them have that moment. And I didn't just step in because I knew exactly how to fix it. You know, like I, I love Luca for everything that it is. Apparently Harley does not appreciate my decision on, on that particular one. She's saying boo out there for Spotify, for Spotify land peoples. Jamie, 
is back in office. So Jamie starts this one off. Jamie, is it brave or finding Nemo? Oh, does it finding me? Oh, finding Nemo. We don't even need to talk about it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Gets a vote. Bubbles. First off, shove it in sideways, Freddy. Like, you can fuck the right fuck off with this one. Fucking shove it. Like, it doesn't even get like a fucking lever. It's just a fucking push it right up there, okay? Something right up to like the that. elbow. <laughs> okay. Finding Nemo was so amazing. And, like, Finding Nemo was still, like, where you could watch, like, the DVD extras and stuff like that. And I, I, I don't know. I was a weird fucking kid because I loved watching that. Finding Nemo led us to Dory. So, I mean, you got, it's like, and Crush. Oh. I know, but Merida, like, she is such an amazing princess. And, like, her going against traditions and shit like that of that time of, like, hey, look, like, no, we got to do this. Like, you got to get married off. We got to keep the peace. Like, that's how it is. And, like that growth, the fucking magic behind it. I love the music behind it. All of the mm -hmm. fucking artwork that went into Brave. Brave is 100% my thing. I was excited for Disney Plus just so I could watch Brave over and over again. And I have done such since. I would have, I would go as bold as saying that Brave may or may not be one of my favorite or like top at least three. Disney movies of all time. So Brave is it, although I do love Finding Nemo. I'm leaving at that. Brave gets a nod, Nancy. So with with this mashup is I have nothing against Brave. I love this movie. I've watched it. I I enjoy it. I think it's funny. I also I am one of the weirdos who is not convinced that the uh Pixar theory that um Boo from Monster Inc. is a little old witch. It's, it's not an option. It could be. It could be. It makes sense. Um, kind of. But I will say just based on age and stuff is I connected more with Finding Nemo. And also I had to like make some of these decisions based on like the memory and are these movies that I quote. And I quote Finding Nemo on a daily basis for the past like 20 years. So, P. Sherman, 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney. It's Nemo. Find Nemo gets a vote. Uh, Bubbles, how, how in love with you are with Brave? Like, the reason I ask this is because I have the option to steal a vote. With that, with five of us being here, that would mean no matter what, Brave would move on. And Shy, I don't know enough about you to even care about this particular one, if you do or do not. So, but I do know that I, Finding Nemo. I like them both. I don't care. <laughs> okay, so fine. So this isn't going to offend you whatsoever. Um, if I can call on you later for a particular movie for your steal of vote if needed i will use my steal of vote for brave to knock out finding nemo which is a front runner in this particular one can i trust you for that all right she's not in her head i will be using my steal of vote um so Shy, I know you don't care, but I will be stealing your vote for, for Brave, because I enjoy this movie as well. I would have voted for Brave. Damn it! <laughs> I should have kept it. I love that you waited until he officially stole the vote before you're like, yeah, this is the way I'm going to vote anyway. So. <laughs> I, 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 I could have helped you. I could have helped you. Now, now you're getting my vengeance. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Either way, Brave moves on. Three to two, knocking out Finding Nemo. That was for Dre, too, by the way. Uh, Dre can't fucking stay in that movie. Bubbles starts us off. And 
One, two, three, four. Okay. Not you know quite. What sucks is when you said bubbles after finding Nemo, the first thing I thought was, hold on, bubbles, 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 my bubbles, my bubbles, my bubbles. My bubbles turns this one off, and bubbles, is it inside out or onward? Oh, god damn it. What the fuck? I, got, I don't know why I signed up for these Disney ones knowing I get so passionate over it. Like, I love Inside Out, and I love the new Inside Out movie as well. I want them to do a prequel for Onward. Like, again, Disney, I understand that you're not a sponsor, but you can also feel free to send royalties this way, and it's a grand idea. But so you know how they were, like, discussing how the dad went and did, like, all kinds of crazy things until he, like, and then, like, obviously left the staff and the magic and shit, right? What if they found a time travel spell and had to go bring the staff to the dad so that everything could play out as it was? And then that would be an awesome, like, it would be like a sequel, prequel, like, fucking combination. And it would be that, that, That's right where my head was. I'm like, do I call it a sequel or a prequel or a, just a quill or a quill? Or a... <laughs> it's a quill. <laughs> It's a quill. It's a D and D mission, is what it is. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. And, like, and how fun would it freaking be? Because then you would know that they get fucked up and like put into the wrong time for a little while, and they're like, "We only have so much time to do this. We gotta, you know, like the adventure would be there. It would be fun. It would tie all together with that fantasy that I love." Um, however. I do think that my vote will be going to Inside Out um, because I think it is awesome. Again, it's one of those coming of age movies. It's really cool to kind of put that on there. And I do often refer to some of the different like emotions when addressing the kids and kind of like trying to navigate their like chaos, their feral behavior. Um, so Inside Out will be my vote. And a uh, Thank you, Harley. I agree. Nancy. Yeah, so this is another hard one because, like, I I will defend the four recent forgotten Pixar gems that, like, are Soul, Onward, um, Soul, Onward, Luca, and Turning Red. I will defend them with my whole heart for being like such great movies that were so like personal. Cause especially when you know that the director was inspired by his own life story and his own, like what happened with him and his brother. And he lost his dad when he was very, very young and was basically raised by his brother is I am all for like people telling personal stories through film. And I feel like that is an amazing medium. However, that all being said, if I go by my metric that I'm going for Disney movies that resonate and are iconic, core memory has become like a phrase I use every day. I'm in a Disney community and we say, oh yeah, this was a core memory for me. Oh, this was like a yellow core memory for me. And like the fact that like also the iconic moments with like some of these characters and the fact that like Bing Bong made me fall as like a fully grown adult in a movie theater. I was crying at Bing Bong. I have to go with Inside Out. I will give all the flowers to Onward as a D&D loving fantasy obsessed nerd um, who also like, I, I love like these very personal growth journeys but I have to give it to Inside Out. Inside Out gets a nod. Uh, Inside Out, um, fun fact on this one, the voice of the toddler version of Riley was also the voice actor for Boo in uh, mm -hmm. Monster Inc. as well. But my voice is, my voice, my vote is going for Onward. Uh, one is a dad movie. And I'm a dad. I appreciate dad movies because dads don't really get shout outs a lot majority of the time. So I got to appreciate for that one too. Um, 
I don't like Lord of the Rings, but I also love it when when movies on a completely different genre, field, whatever, do shout outs to other movies. Mm -hmm. Completely off of movies. And Eagle Eye viewers would see that on in the burger joint or on the burger joint sign uh, and onward, it says now serving second breakfast. <laughs> what about second breakfast? You already so, have did they all, did they also have elevensies? Yeah. So so I appreciate that. Um, by the way, I, I did forget my fun facts for um, uh, Finding Nemo and Brave. Brave, of course, is the uh, the first female-led story not to have a love interest. We all know that. However, Nemo in invented the word tr uh, transblurency, which is probably one of my new favorite words, uh, with the jellyfish, where it was solid but not completely solid. So there's that one. I'm crossing these off as I go, so I, I needed to get that, that particular one out there. My vote's going to go for Onward on this one, just, just for all the dads out there. Shy. Um, I actually haven't seen Onward, um, but I did very much enjoy Inside Out, so Inside Out has my vote. Gets the vote and the win off of that one. Jamie, finish it out. Fully agree with everything she said. Haven't seen Onward, and I'm voting for Inside Out. Four to one, Inside Out moves on to the next round. Last up. Onward came out right before the pandemic. Yeah. So... My sister and I went and took one of our cousins and the kids and all that to go see Onward in theaters. And a week later, everything shut down and they started offering Onward for free on Disney+. Plus. You know, I think I've seen part of it maybe at one point when the pandemic very first started, but I never watched the whole thing. So I, I mean, don't recall. It doesn't look bad, though. It is a Jack Black movie, so. It's got Chris Pratt, Tom Holland, Octavia Spencer, Julia Lewis Dreyfus. Okay, we're good with that. And, yeah. and as someone who is like basically married to D and D, and like is so far involved into D and D, and I love, and I am really involved in fantasy, um, and like basically I'm married to the fantasy realm at this point. Um, how they handle fantasy is amazing giving it like a modern context but it still feels like a fantasy realm like the realm of dnd it's amazing and i that is a it's a wonderful movie and it needs more love it really does all right last up we're going to go back to a playing matchup and i start uh sorry uh, nancy starts this one off nancy is it toy story 2 which won the pre uh, previous matchup or cars one So if if you if you had asked me this five years ago, I would told I would automatically answer to you, Toy Story two. I would told you Toy Story two right right away because I for a long time never cared about the Cars movies or the Cars franchise. That being said, as I mentioned before, I have an amazing uh, four and three quarters old son who has autism and who just started getting into watching movies. And he's obsessed with cars. We watch cars all the time. And I've watched all three cars movies multiple times this week alone. <laughs> um, so, and I have to say that cars is actually, I slept on cars for too long. It is incredible. It is a really good movie. And also, like, for my son, I have to vote for Cars because I think Cars is just, it's incredible. And I really do love it. So I'm voting for Cars for my son. Cars gets a vote. Cars gets a second vote from me. Uh, I do like the second Toy Story movie. I personally think it's better than the first first Toy Story movie. However, I love the movie Cars. Uh, there's a lot of adult jokes in this movie. There's a lot of kid jokes in this movie. There's just all the way across the board. I still quote. Uh, Mater more than I probably should. But it also has one of my favorite fun facts from any Pixar movie, and that is be, that is from uh, Chuck Berry. 
and for all you Chuck Berry fans out there, they wanted to use a version of uh, the song Route 66 that was done by Chuck Berry. Mm -hmm. uh, but when they contacted Berry's record company, the people that, that put out his music and stuff, the record company had no idea that that version even existed. But it turns out Pixar was right. It was it was on the B the B side of a single that didn't do very well, so it was just a completely random thing that just happened to happen. So I love when old music that is well before its time um, has the ability to pop pop back in. And uh, Harley is also on here. Says my boys. All three love cars. They all have autism. Also, Mater is supposed to have autism as as well. So, yeah, shout out to that one. As a as a um as someone who has ASD and is a mother of a child with ASD, I totally think Mater does. <laughs> I'm gonna go with cars on this one. Shy, cars or Toy Story two. is not in office right now. Jamie. Um definitely Kachow. Kachow, Kachow, Kachow. I watched the crap out of that movie with my son. He calls tractors happens cuz what happened to him when they fell over? What happened? And I was just discussing with my nephew that um, for my family tattoo leg, I might be doing a Mater and Lightning McQueen uh, for them. I just think that movie is, I don't know. It's just every time you watch it, you find out something different or you see something different. And I have been told, too, that the rides at uh, Disneyland California Adventure for cars are really, really fun. So I'm looking forward to checking that out in the future. So cars all the way. Gets a vote. Shy. It was Cars against what? Toy Story 2? Toy Story 2. Cars. Gets another one. And Bubble, finish this up. Um, I think I heard somebody earlier say that they were not like super big on Toy Story. I think it was Shy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like it well enough that if it's on TV, like I'll watch it. But I'm also not the biggest Toy Story fan either. Like, so that's not my vote. I'm gonna go ahead. I am gonna go with Cars because Mater is amazing. I grew yeah. up in the sticks, so I understand like all these like hick jokes that they've got thrown in there. Uh, <laughs> Who doesn't love Larry the Cable Guy? Right? At least they had a lot of people don't like Lavender Cable Guy. I I grew up watching Blue Collar Comedy Tour. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I grew up with a lot of like Blue Collar Comedy Tour and I had a lot of classmates who are very Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> Same. So many still out there are very Larry the Cable Guy-esque and I, you know what, the nostalgia just from that, I dig it. I am all for it. So Cars is going to go ahead and get my vote as well. Also, hey, some... well oh, go sorry. Ahead. I have a go fun ahead. fact for you guys. He wasn't supposed to be in, in as much of the movie as he was. Mm -hmm. He was but supposed to be it. a cameo. Mm -hmm. And he, he was literally supposed to have two lines, but they loved him so much they had him do more. And he actually also has said recently that he knew he made it as a comedian when Pixar called him. Because he knew that he must have been funny if Pixar wanted him to be in a movie. That is a five to zero vote, which means it is also a what? It's a sweep, bitches. And it also finishes out the first half of round one. So we'll be right back right after this break. Uh, no real updates as far as the entire recasting call, go casting call goes, except for the simple fact that this Thursday... As we record, the newest episode of the Recasting Call comes out. That is with myself and my co-host, Kate. We recasted the movie, the 1999 movie, She's All That. So if you're a fan of that movie, fan of... Do, uh, do love some Amanda Bynes. Uh, that's 
different movie. Um, oh, yeah. Now I'm thinking she's the man. Yeah, she's the man. That's a different movie. That might be something we might do in the future. I don't know. Uh, but She's All That comes out, out this Thursday as well. And there's also an episode of um, uh, Bastards Backstage out now with uh, Eric G. So go ahead and check that one out. Shay, you haven't been up, uh, up for a while. What have you been up to? Uh, moving. Um, and five to six of my days are spent podcasting anymore. On top of that, um, you can catch me on the radio on Mondays on the Thin Line Rock Station. And since Glenn has been out of town, I've been doing Flashback Fridays. So I'll be to six. And I think him and I are going to split Fridays. So he does 70s and 80s for the first two hours. And then the next two hours, I'll be doing 90s and 2000s. Um, but uh, we're doing Mondays and Thursdays for Big Brother right now, which I'm fairly certain after what just happened this week, I will riot. Um, then Wednesdays, uh, we still have the paranormal guys, Green and Guardian Gang on uh, Fridays and the Misfits on Saturdays. But once Big Brother is over, we're actually getting two new shows. Um, Amanda, who has joined our ranks, her and her friend are going to be doing more of a paranormal show. And then we had a guest on two weeks ago on Para or Normal Guys who I decided to adopt. So her and I are going to be starting our our own little uh, where we, we talk about smut books, pretty much. There you go. Um, as far as Big Brother goes, I stopped watching after like the third episode because I could not stand one of the people on that fucking show. Which one? The the woman who uh, Angela. Probably I can't remember Blonde. her name. Yeah, like the Angela. <laughs> the older woman Angela. on that show. Yeah. <laughs> like no, she 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 just so one of the guys had been kicking ass this whole time, and he was winning like crazy, and he even helped her out. She flipped the house on him. And things were getting juicy in the house because him and one of the other girls had a thing going on. And me and Amanda were sitting around like, come on, we're just waiting for, <laughs> we're just, we're just waiting to see him and Rubina screw. <laughs> and she goes and votes him out. So we're a little pissed. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I, I couldn't stand her. There's, there's so much um, victim type mm -hmm. things where she's she's playing the victim knowing she wasn't the victim mm -hmm. and that gets guys into a lot of trouble so i'm sitting there going it's like i can't watch this this is even though she wasn't wrong about matt but she's she's lost her fucking mind yeah no there was a there no there was a part in that like she like what was what she read into was completely false and then people got screwed mm -hmm. about it. i'm sitting there going like you're you're a dipshit. Anyway, yep. <laughs> welcome back for the second half of round one. It looks like Shy starts us off on this one. And Shy, is it Winnie the Pooh, the um, 2011, I believe, movie on that one, or Tangled? Tangled. Tangled gets a nod off of that one. I don't care much Je anything about Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> well, except for Blood and Honey. Uh, Jamie looks True. like she is away from the screen at the moment. No, oh, nope, she's back. Jamie, is it Winnie the Pooh 2011 or uh, Tangled? Um, I don't know. I'm going to go with classic old. Doesn't matter if it's 2011 version for me or not. I'm going to go with uh, Winnie the Pooh. My love for Winnie the Pooh goes for many years. Get to vote, Bubbles. Oh my gosh, it's Winnie the Pooh versus Tangled? Okay, so I love, of course, Winnie the Pooh. Like, I definitely love it. However, 
I just happen to love Tangled more. The little adventure from somebody who just like was stuck in a tower and like the amount of trust she just puts into this stranger. And then the whole time he's like, this is a terrible idea. Like the <laughs> realism that comes from him and the like not because all she had was books. So, you know, obviously books aren't reality, but here she is just reading it. And it's like everything's going to be fine, which I feel is like. I try to have in my personality as much as I can. Uh, like everything's going to be cool. Everything's fine. And it's laid back where you also have to have that counterpart of like, nah, girl, you need to sit down because this is a terrible idea. Like, I hate, but she's it. hopping on like one of the hottest, uh, if you could call it Disney princes there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eugene, which is still one of my favorite yes. names for a Fitz Herbert. Right. <laughs> So Tangled is 100% going to be my vote. It does get a vote off of that one, Nancy. Yeah, I, I I grew up loving Winnie the Pooh. And like I said, I'm, I'm a 90s baby. I grew up like in the prime day of Winnie the Pooh being like the it thing for kids. Um, and me and my husband love old school Winnie the Pooh. However, that movie is very forgettable. Is mm -hmm. that, that there's so many times that me and my my husband have been like, have have we seen this version? Have we seen, there, have, have we seen this one? There is a reason behind that though. The release date for uh for this Winnie the Pooh movie was also the same release date as the Deathly uh Hallows. Deathly Hollows Part Two. I have a funny story. Me and my friends, a whole group of our friends, went to go see uh, Deathly Hollows at midnight. And one of our and two of our friends said, "Oh, we have something the next day." And the thing they had the next day was they were going to go see Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> and that's why they told us they couldn't see Deathly Hallows. Was they were going to go see Death Winnie the Pooh the next morning? Dude, I mean, you you've got to choose between the Deathly Hallows and Winnie the Pooh. What the fuck? But like, so I'm sorry, I have to go with Tangled because I just think Tangled is like so so incredible. It's great, but also I forget. I've forgotten twice that I've seen that movie. <laughs> I'm I'm going to go for Winnie the Pooh on this one. I'm going to give some fun facts. So, uh, Tangled is the first Disney movie, the first Disney animated movie to have the PG rating. Instead of G ratings, the PG rating. And uh, Mandy Moore and Zachary Levi only met to record the song I See the Light. All the rest of the lines were recorded separately, which I think is still pretty cool. However, Winnie the Pooh, um, one got screwed because of the entire release date type thing. But Craig Ferguson, who is one of my favorite comedians of all times, one of the a, a badass bag, uh, bagpipe player too, off off the wall, played Owl in this movie, and it's one of the weirdest, just voice renditions mm -hmm. of anything it's fucking owl it's craig ferguson and i love it so it's uh I might, the I might have to go go back and rewatch it just for that <laughs> yeah win of the Pooh gets my vote but tangled moves on three to two we'll be facing another three to two in the next round uh jamie starts us off on this one jamie is it i'm really glad i'm with i'm with the girls i am today is it Frozen or the Emperor's New Groove? We're going to need to let this shit go, and it's going to be the Emperor's New Groove. For real. I mean, I love me some Olaf. I love me, you want to kill somebody and bury him six feet down renditions of want to build a snowman. I love all that, but I'm over it. I am over it, period. Bring it on. <laughs> Get some yes. vote. Bubbles. Both of these movies are so fucking quotable, and I'm here for it. Okay, like I pull out these, I pull these out of my back butt door. <laughs> <laughs> my back butt. <laughs> but like I pull these out on my kids all the time. Um, I love belting out let it go throughout the house as my kids are just wilding out. Um, I also love when my kids run into me and I'm like, oh, you threw off my groove. <laughs> or like somebody else says something similar. I'm like, you've thrown off the emperor's groove. And like, <laughs> I knock them over and everything. 
And I Sorry. really wish they, I wish they would like catch up, you know, and be cool or something. Just lame ass kids. Who's raising these heathens? But uh Emperor's lame New ass kids. Is 100% getting my vote because I love that movie so freaking I love that movie way more than it should. Like, and the fact that he breaks the fourth wall in there, like what? Oh God! Yes, he has his own theme music. Nancy, pull the lever, crunk. Um, pull the lever. lever. Why do we even have that lever? <laughs> oh my God! So first off, this is this is really easy for me. I'm gonna come in here. I'm sure this is an unpopular opinion with people. I've had this. I don't care for Frozen. That's not unpopular. That's the reason why I said I'm glad I'm with the girls I am today. Because I, I do not care for Frozen. I prefer Frozen two over it. Um, I I am. I think it's a okay movie with catchy songs. But Emperor's New Groove was like mind blowing as a Cusco. kid. The poison designed specifically to kill Cusco. Cusco. Cusco's, 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 Cusco's poison. poison. Like, my spinach puffs. <laughs> Careful, they're still hot. <laughs> or, or my, or my favorite is like, kill him, take him out of town, and finish the job with butter wrap dessert. Fine, have dessert, then take him out of town, and finish the job in a cup of coffee. Okay, time for a quick cup of coffee. Um, we yeah. So I have to go... with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go with it. It's like that whole movie is quotable. Um, also, John Goodman is amazing in there. Like, we have to go with Emperor's New Groove. Gives a nod and a win off of that one. I'm going to go for uh, Emperor's New Groove as well. Um, but to give Frozen a nod real quick, it took it's the longest running from conception to completion movie from Disney because it started like 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's when they wanted to make it. They just couldn't ever actually get it done. So they've had the storyboards that that particular long. Also, Anna is the uh, is on record to be in the oldest princess, oldest Disney princess, mm -hmm. at 24 years old. Damn. So I know. Uh, props to Emperor's New Groove, though. Emperor's uh, in the, in the Emperor's New Groove, the wife was the first pregnant person on screen yep so props to them on that one uh my favorite the reason i'm voting for emperor's new groove though is the entire pump t the pup tent scene mm -hmm. which to people who don't know what i'm talking about there in spotify land it's cronk is laying on the ground and cronk is he's a big a, dude he's, he's a big a dude but <laughs> the only the only part that the tent is over is his crotch area and there's the entire joke about pitching a tent, which for anybody out there who doesn't know anybody under the, under the age of 18, please close your ears for 30 seconds. Uh, it, for guys out there, it means that you are posting excited. a boner at that particular time. You are extremely <laughs> excited. And to put that in a kid's movie is still one of my favorite just mind-blowing little jokes. So it gets my vote off of that one. The amount of like slightly adult yes. humor in that movie, and also like quick aside, the fact that that movie was like in such development. If the original movie they wanted was made, it would have been a vast different movie. And like that's one of the things that just like drives me crazy about this movie is everything went wrong in production, but it still became this iconic gem somehow. I, I would say probably the most quotable movie. Yeah. It's probably better than the movie that they thought they were going to make. I almost feel like there may have possibly have been a script. And then they were like, fuck the script. Y'all just start y'all just start doing your shit. <laughs> just start going. We'll just figure something talking. out. If their lips are moving, your voice should be moving too. And we're just going to go with it. Like... Speaking of finishing a movie, uh, Shy, finish this out. Is it New Groove or Frozen? So, I 
I do actually really love Frozen, but more the Frozen soundtrack, which is also in my car, because I absolutely love uh, uh, Frozen Heart, the first song. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's always going to be Emperor's New Groove over Frozen, specifically for Krunk, and Krunk's New Groove, and the TV show. <laughs> New Groove goes five to zero. We'll be facing a three to two in the next round. What is that, Bubbles? It's a sweet bitches. The whisper makes it sound so much better. Bubbles also starts this one off. Bubbles, is it uh, winning a playing matchup? Is it Wreck It Ralph number one or Bolt? Oh, this one's super easy. It's going to be Wreck-It Ralph. Like, Bolt was cute, and I'll put it on from time to time. And I do like Miley Cyrus. I'm not even going to lie. I'm still a fan. Um, You know, however, Wreck-It Ralph overall was just a way better movie. Gets a vote. Nancy. Yeah, it's wreck it Ralph. I'm Bolt is cute, but again, it's forgettable. Like I feel this this era of Disney that Bolt is from is we either had underrated films that never broke the mold that were amazing, or you had movies that were you had two movies that were terrible in my opinion, and then movies that were just forgettable and dull. And that's how I feel about Bolt. So it has to be Wreck It Ralph. Gets a vote. It's going to get my vote as well, too, which means that we'll be moving on. Shy, Wreck-It Ralph for Bolt. I, I never watched Bolt, never cared to watch Bolt, but I absolutely love watching Wreck-It Ralph with my niece and nephew, so it'll always be Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> Gets another one. Finish this out, Jamie. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, absolutely Wreck-It Ralph. Um, it's probably one of my top favorite movies to be honest. So, yeah. Wrecker Ralph moves on 5-0, to zero, which is a sweep, and it moves on to face another 5-0, to zero, which is another sweep. So we have two sweeps facing off against each other next round. Before I... Bef before I let, I let Bolt go on this one, Bolt uh, and um, Bolt was changed to Volt in Russia. Because in Russian, the word bolt is a slang term for the penis. And I really okay. wish your guys' mics were on when that happened. Because you guys... Do you Just say it. To... No, you no, no. You, you, ruin the, you ruin the moment. The, pe the penis is gone. Is it ruined or should our uh, listeners maybe be listening to us live so that they can get our live reactions? Exactly. There's that the penis, one. Is, the penis is gone, Bubbles. <laughs> the, the, the royal penis is clean. Oh, sorry. Favorite. Wrong movie. Wreck-It Ralph moves on 5-0. to zero. Next up, Nancy starts us off. Is it? Oh, this matchup keeps, keeps coming up, and I fucking hate it, but just everywhere. Is it Big Hero 6 or Lilo and Stitch? Oh, fuck you, Freddy. That's I will take that one. I, I agree with you. I don't this like it either. Disgusting. Like, I just want to barf. Okay. I want to just. Bleh. How yep. could you? How could you, Freddy? I do want to let you know, too, that we're in the uh, Bastards winner's bracket that we're doing on uh, Facebook right now. This matchup also comes up in the same fucking thing. It's not in the same it, spot, but it's... Yeah. Freaking hell. This is, this is like Sophie's choice. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like... Should we talk about the soundtrack for okay. Leon Stitch for a minute? I, a bomb... Yeah. How fucking bomb that soundtrack is. <laughs> I will give you one piece of it. I don't I don't normally do this, but I will give you guys this piece of information. Uh because it will be facing a five to zero in, in the next round. So this is important for my decision. So I'm gonna give you the information if you want. If you don't want this piece of information, close your ears for a couple seconds. Either Big Hero Six or Lilo and Stitch will be facing Meet the Robinsons. 
Oh. In round two. Mm. Oh. I was out for reals plugging my ears and I heard it. First off, fuck off. What? Okay. I gave you warning. Like, I'm just going to put this out there on easy street, but I think I fucking quit. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't like this. All right. <laughs> Nancy, it, it is still on you, though. It was a Big Hero 6 for Lilo and Stitch. Remember, you still have Steel of Oat and Loads. Oh. Hey, Load. Like, this is my, my issue right now. Is like, Lilo and Stitch is... Stitch himself is an icon. Let's just put out there that Michael the Eisner wanted to make, like, Robert uh, Roger Rabbit the his Mickey Mouse... And tried so hard and that didn't work. And who became the character who got to the status of Mickey Mouse? Freaking Stitch. That was like the director's joking impersonation he did around the office. Mm -hmm. And that movie is just so good. It is so like, if you think of the Disney, the good Disney movies of the 2000s of the experimental era, it's like that's the one that is like, it had success, which it deserved. It had an amazing promotional campaign. Such an amazing promotional campaign that my older sister is called 626 because of their promotional campaign. Uh, there's one in every family. And my dad said that ours is her. Um, and like, so it's iconic. But on the other hand, Meet the Rob... I'm uh, not going to Meet the Robinsons. You've got me all flustered now, Betty. Um... <laughs> Big Hero 6 is this quiet but amazing giant of the, of the movies. It is, of the more modern movies, it's definitely one of the ones of the revival era that kind of gets swept under, rug, under the Moanas and the Zootopias and the Frozens. But it's amazing. It's amazing. And, like, so this is my, this is my quandary right now. And also... It had the first life as a Marvel comic. So, and it has Alan Tudyk, who is a national treasure and must be protected. Mm. I guess I'm blowing my load. I'm blowing my load and I'm going <laughs> to blow up. That took longer than I thought it was going to. There's no amount of load that we can blow right now that can fix this or help in this decision making. Uh. I can let you guys know. I'm I'm voting next. This is not a hard decision for me. I don't I, I don't like Lilo and Stitch. I don't. I, it's, it's, it's not. It's just not my type of movie. Uh, I am an Alan T Tudyk fan though, so Big Hero Six would get my vote on that one regardless. Uh, Big Hero Six is also for all you. Video, not video game. All, all, all you uh, Marvel comic fans out there is also Stan Lee's last cameo. Yes, and that's the other reason why I can't, I couldn't make this. So, game. there's that as far as that goes. Lilo and Stitch has also won a bracket in the past as well, which is uh, when splitting hairs on things, it, it kind of it always goes goes against it, uh, and it also. Um, I will give Lilo and Stitch one piece of credit, though. Lilo is voiced by um, uh, Devonaugh Chase, if I pronounce her name right, who was also the little girl in the ring, mm -hmm. and they came out in the same year. Yep. Which I, I always found that kind of funny. However, Big Hero 6 just gets my vote, mainly, mainly for the Stanley reference, just period across the board. Shot. So I'm going to steal Nancy's vote on this one. Oh, that's and, nice of you. Uh, I am voting for Lilo and Stitch. Uh, Love you, Nancy. Yes. Get two votes off of that one. We we will get Nancy's final vote later on if she decides to give it. Jamie, Lilo and Stitch or Big Hero 6? I mean, fuck you first off. Uh, Big Hero 6 is a great movie. 
Um, I really got hooked to it the more I watched it. And, um, but I'm a huge Stitch fan and everybody knows that about me too. Um, really, really love the, the meaning behind a lot of what happens in that movie and re relating it to oh, real oh, life Hannah. and everything. Yeah, so Hana, and the, that's where I was going with that. Was it had a lot of family meeting to me. So I, I mean, not just because I love Stitch. I'm going to, I've given Stitch a lot of love in the past, but I'm going to give it to Big Hero 6. Which means bubbles. It is a tie-breaking decision. You're on mute. You're on mute. There you go. What the fuck, Jamie? <laughs> Because it's a tight decision, and I don't like this. I was, like, sitting there. I was like, cool, she's going to vote for Lilo and Stitch, and then I can make this, like, a split vote here. You know, because it deserves to be. But I don't know what to do. <laughs> do we have anybody in the comments? Like, Yeah, but I don't want to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going to act like this? Why are you going to behave like this? Okay, I thought we were because it's a cop out, and you know it. It is a cop out. It absolutely is. Um, that and Harley has gotten my vote multiple times. So, so you said that Lilo and Stitch has already won a bracket in the past. Yeah, won the uh, Disney songs. Bracket for Hawaiian roller coaster ride. By the way, speaking of yes. that too, uh, not the song, but originally this movie was supposed to be set in Kansas. That was a good decision. Yeah, the only reason why is that one, one of the producers uh, had a family trip out to one of the Hawaiian Hawaiian islands. That's why that's why they changed it. Nothing wrong with Kansas. It's just not Hawaii. Also, Stitch was supposed to like hijack a plane, but because of 9-11, uh, they had to change yep. that. Not only that, but the mountains that he's driving through were buildings. I remember that they were buildings when the movie first came out, and then I remember they changed it to the, the mountains. I remember all of that switch. But because Lilo and Stitch has already won a previous bracket, I am also going to go ahead and go for Big Hero 6 because it absolutely does deserve uh, three to two faces a five to zero in the next round oh uh, nancy what would your vote have been yeah nancy i think it would have ended up having to go over to um big hero six because of Stanley, who is one of my my idols and heroes and because of its comic book origins also because it's another one that like guts you into the feel feels right in the first couple minutes and i just remember that movie like it's another one i saw as an adult but i saw it in theaters and absolutely loved it and felt like the movie was made for me so I'm, right. I'm glad that it, it it went through jamie's gonna uh jamie's gonna have to go pretty quick so i'm gonna go ahead and start this off jamie or sorry myself uh it's either Coco or Soul. Uh, ironically enough, these two were put together. The uh, I I've seen both of these movies. I prefer Coco. I prefer Coco for the music. I prefer Coco for which is really weird because Soul has a lot of blues to it. Yeah. But I love how fun fun Coco is and the entire villain story that you don't realize until like halfway through it. And I didn't see it coming type thing. Giggity. But Coco gets my particular vote. Shy. Coco as well. I didn't really care to see soul, but I, I loved how colorful everything was in Coco. And it was just a very, very visually pleasing movie as well as the, the music and the story and everything. All right. And, Jamie, is it Coco or Soul? I will have to agree with Sky on this one. The colorful, fun, visual part of it is what attracted me to it. But then, like you said, the twist in uh, what's going on in the movie and everything, I'm I'm here for it. Coco it is. Gets another vote and the win. Jamie, 
Before you go, where can people find you? Well, if you fuck around and find out, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, basically, if you hit me up on Facebook, um, get me by my first name, you'll be able to find all my social medias. Otherwise, I am Slipknot Chica or Slipknot Chica 17. You can find me pretty much everywhere. So, thank you guys. Glad you got to stop by, Jay. There, there, Jamie. Talk to you later. All right, with Jamie off the board, that means I, I'm hosting. I am not voting off of this one. So this is the last five count that we currently have. Bubbles, is it Coco or Soul? You're on mute. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to go with Soul just for the specific line of uh, you beefed it or... And I'm going to unbeef it. <laughs> Working in a customer service environment and being under like management and then being into management and like fixing different things. Um, That like, God damn, why is everybody fucking beefing things up? Like you guys are stupid. I'm going to use that now. <laughs> Got to go unbeef you guys and shit. <laughs> exactly exactly I, so i like i laughed so hard at that and like i would say it all the time like you beefed it now i've got to unbeef it i had to like walk away and it was really funny when nobody knew what i was talking about and they just like you fucking weirdo <laughs> soul gets a vote nancy finishes out is it soul or coco mute Sorry. Uh, mine's escaped me. What's the score right now? Uh, Coco's moving on. Okay. Yeah, so then I'm just going to go ahead and give Soul some love then. Because uh, I do love love Coco. Coco is my aesthetic. I um, I really love the holiday Dia de los Muertos. I love it mm -hmm. so much. And um, I, I appreciate it as someone who's that's not part of my culture. And I just love, I love that aesthetics too. Just like watching movies about Same. it and hearing people talk about it. But I'm going to give Soul some love because I, I just love how much, like, I love the whole message of it. I love the whole introspectiveness of him, like thinking that like, oh, there's a, this was my purpose to live. And that whole in thing where it's like that's not what it is what you what your spark is it's not your purpose it what makes you want to and as someone who's had suffered from mental health like that movie just moved me to like shock and tears and i'm going to just give it some love coco moves on three to two to the next round bubbles if josh is around he's more he's more than welcome to to join us so he can finish out the entire Disney one that he started last week. So you're on mute. He's not even working today. He's not even here. Uh, he is out doing a football draft today. Um, <laughs> he's such a nerd. <laughs> hey, we're the one talking about Disney movies. So like, I it's so funny because like, like he has his little things that he does like I I don't have a favorite football team I don't really like watch sports but like I will sit there and I will participate and I will happily make snacks for events like I will joyfully do that um the Super Bowl absolutely because they have a halftime performance that I enjoy watching but that's what he's doing today. Um, I do have Brandy here, but she's a little bit busy. Um, is Harley still watching? Should we reach? No. No. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, I don't. So there's that. It, it's all right. I was just kind of. I, I was wanting to give him a chance. Uh, we 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 do have an op uh, open door for those who can join. Uh, contact one of the other people on the screen besides myself because I'm using my phone, so I can't actually let you in. So there's that. Shy starts us off on this one. Shy, is it Monsters Incorporated or Turning Red? Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. gets a vote. Uh, 
Bubbles. I love both of these movies too. Um, I'm going to go with Turning Red on this one. I, I loved Monsters, Inc. But I think I like the Turning Red better. And while Nancy decides her uh, her vote on this one, which is going to be whatever moves on, bringing up the fun fact from last one, Coco uh, was changed to um, Viva Viva Avada or Luma Fiesta, because in Brazil, uh, Coco means poop. <laughs> I knew that one. Uh, soul. The subway. The subway line. I, I love it when when mo movies call back to other movies. The subway line is twenty three nineteen. Yeah. So for all you Monsters Incorporated fans uh, out there, that's that one for you. As far as uh, Monsters Incorporated and turning red. Uh. I don't have one for turning red, but uh, Monsters Incorporated, Mary Gibbs, who plays Boo, uh, was so hard to keep in to keep in the booth that the directors just attached a mic to her and just let her play and, and used the noises she was making as her lines. Yep. I love that. Which, which I thought was kind of cool, too. So uh, heading back to Nancy on this one. Nancy, is it Monsters, Inc. or Turning Red? Yeah. Do you want to know who's facing the next round? I, I don't think it's going to impact my decision, okay. honestly, because I think I, I know who my decision is. Um, again, like I said before, I'll give love to Turning Red. I, it was a really solid movie. Uh, I'm Come on, Disney, release that four town. Give us a four town CD where that's what the people want. Um, right after but... have five members. <laughs> Why are they called four town if they have five members? <laughs> um, but anyhow, I, I gotta give it to Monsters Inc. Uh, the iconic duo that was Billy Crystal and John and John Goodman. The fact that like that's the song that they sang at the end. If I didn't have you, it's one of my favorite songs from Pixar <laughs> movies. That's my it's, line. <laughs> um. Also, the uh, the genius that is the. Uh, Put that thing back where she came from, or so help me. Hey, we're putting at a company musical. Put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. Did you watch the musical? So help me, so help me, and cut. I still think my, my favorite saying, favorite thing about Monsters Inc., which I do enjoy this movie, and it would have gotten my vote, is the entire, um, on all the, the, uh, the movie, not movie posters, but all the magazines are on, and and uh, the stuff that they throw on like Disney Plus, they always cover Mike's face somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so um, it's just like an so on running gag. I can double check, Freddie. I have my my husband and his podcast host are both here right now. Yeah. I can yeah, see if trying. one of them wants to want to come in yeah. and just give their opinion and vote. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Say, uh, take up Jamie's spot. Yeah, let me. I'll be right You're back. Good. All right. All right. Uh, ch -ch -ch. I that don't was... know about you, but again, me with all my movie extras on the DVDs. Did you watch the like play that they they actually like did the play? Did they? I didn't know Entire. that. So help me. Yeah, I, I I didn't know that either. Yeah, and it was like pieces of it. Like they just kind of like went through. They like did the song, and like it, it was it's kind of funny actually. And then they also did one on his car as well. So the whole reason Sully's like, yeah, we're not getting back in that. Like they have a whole little short on the car. And I, I love Rex just showing up too. <laughs> They just ducked out and it's my best friend is the only one here. And she's like, I've only seen Monsters, Inc. And she says, I know, I know more Disney movies from the nineties. Well, that was last week. 
Yeah. So I'm I'm sorry. Because he was also, according to her, you're supposed to uh, come back in 10 minutes. And uh, he was supposed to come back in 15 minutes. And that was 10 minutes ago. So I don't even know when he's going to pop back in the house. So Well, I mean, there's a... There's an open in, uh, invite on that one. Jamie is supposed to start this one off. She's not here. So Bubbles starts this one off. Bubbles, is it Bugs Life or The Incredibles? I love both of these movies. Um, they both have super. I'm just, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go with the. Um, just for that scene where he says if they all like we're stronger than one ant, but if they all like realize it, they can like take us over. Um, I don't remember the exact words, but that's like the gist of it. Like, yeah, they may be small, but in large. Yeah, quantity. no, I, I know what you're talking about. All right. So Bugs Life gets that particular vote off of that one. Nancy, is it Bugs Life or The Incredibles? It's The Incredibles. No caps. At my mode is a mood. Oh. Yeah, you're having mic issues. Oh, frick. She, she is an icon. Can you hear me? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, so it's The Incredibles. Uh, at no, at no mode is iconic. Like, I love Edna Mode. Uh, no caps. No capes gets a vote. By the way, the reason there is a reason why there is no capes, uh, no cape, uh, capes are notoriously bad to try to, um, try to create on screen mm -hmm. unless they are live action. So they just save their self a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of trauma because, uh, they, just with that one line and that one line itself became came iconically quotable so no capes just like no soups gets a vote which means it is a tie break decision coming down to shy on this one shy is it bugs life or the incredibles do you want to know who's facing the next round nope because it's incredibles all the way incredibles gets a vote uh that's with two to one odds on that one moves on faces a three to two in the next round Nancy starts us off. God help us. And finishes off this particular finishes off round one. Is it Wally or Ratatouille? I you're, on, you're on mute, Bubbles. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just like. Uh... I know. I'm glad because I'm just sitting over here shouting, what the fuck? Do you want to hear it? Do you want to hear my obnoxious? What the fuck? So straight fucking garbage. That's what I'm doing. I mean, that's what that that that's how the entire um opening drops happen. First off, this is how all the fucking gray hair that I've been managing to find on my head has started happening. Okay, like, let me be honest, I wasn't this gray until I started being such a bastard. It comes with the territory. <laughs> well, as long as it comes. It's all that matters. <laughs> anyway, Ratatouille or Wally there, Nancy? Uh, so this is a very tough decision. And I think I can just kind of vote my gut because I'm going to try and avoid myself going on another rant. Because God help us if I go in another one. Um, so I'm just going to have to suck it up and vote Wally. Wally gets a nod. By the way, uh, going back a little bit, Incredibles, my marker on here says uh, it had a 14-year gap between the uh, first one and the second one. Yeah. Uh, Bugs Life faced that one. And... Bugs Life was noted for having it's the first movie, first animated movie to have outtakes. Which the, the so, outtakes that Pixar did were like used to were be so fucking good. funny. Ratatouille and Wally. Uh, 
Apparently in, in Ratatouille, the wine ordered by Ego uh, mathematically is about $4,000 a bottle. Oh, good God. Oh, God. And in Wally, uh, my fun fact is the pet roach was named Hal, was named after Hal 9000 from Space Odyssey 2001. So call, calling back to another movie. Hmm. So. Shy, is it Ratatouille or Wally? It's going to be Wally for me as well. Well, I guess another vote. Is it a sweep there, Bubbles? It's not a sweep. Um, I love both of these movies. I'm glad that you know, no matter which one moved on, I'm not going to lie. Like I would have, I feel like I would have just been the split vote on it here anyways, because both of them absolutely deserves at least one vote. Um, so I am going to go ahead and give my vote to Ratatouille. I do love that movie quite a bit. <laughs> Ratatouille gets to vote, but while he gets to win, two to one, moving on to the next round, faces a four to one in the next round as well. We'll be right back right after this break. Nancy's been out for a bit. What you been up to? Yeah. Uh, life. <laughs> Just moved house um, to, a, to a new place. I am trying to navigate getting a f four year old ready for kindergarten especially a four-year-old special special needs and uh, helping my husband edit his podcast. Um, thinking, maybe trying, hopefully we're thinking about me and him starting a podcast, but I, I don't know. So just life going crazy and trying to ride the waves, baby. Preach. I'm going to, I'm going to start branching out pretty soon on making, um, <laughs> It's, I'm going to eventually call eventually call it ABC Podcast, which is an all bastards channel. Um, that's what for. The reason I say that is because I put that on, on my job resume yeah. as an ABC Podcast because I've been running this thing for like fucking almost three years now. It'd be three years in a couple months. So uh, it, it, it'd be up to the rest of the crew to bring, bring you guys in. But if you guys need like a channel to go on to type thing. We're going to start branching out for a little bit more of a uh, presence of stuff that we don't already do. I, I I would totally like bring that up to you guys. I like, and it'd be like, I'd also like bring it up to him. Uh, so right now the, the idea that we were kind of going off is we're, we're really like indie. Uh, so uh, Dr. Deaf hand, we're a really little indie uh, podcast is we have a very small but vocal following of 20 people <laughs> who um we love them but they're also they they're very opinionated our our, our very small group of uh, followers but like we would love to i think right now is the issue we're having is i would love to do a disney podcast myself i my husband's outright said that he could not sit down every week and talk about disney He's like, I love Disney, but I just can't sit down every week and talk about it. I want to talk about anime. And and th so that's what his podcast is. It's a lot of he gets to talk about every single genre of movie. And he also gets to be an obnoxious, crotchety old man character while he's doing it. So, but like. Respect the game. Yeah. I got to set him, him up with uh, Kevin Stoner. He is a, he is an animated person yeah. like an animation type person that he, that is what his his entire love goes to so like be the type of person to talk about that all the time so yeah anyway. uh gotta wait for bubbles to come back but no yeah yeah that's what that's what we're trying to do is eventually try trying to get that entire tires I have a yeah. fly that's just keeps smacking me in the face. Stop it. I, I have an ant that's walking up and down this wall right next to me that I'm leaning against. And every so often I just see it. I'm like, what the heck? And it's a single ant. I'm sitting there going, so you have the entire entire basement to float around in and you're smacking me in the face. I don't know what the fuck it is. Anyway, <laughs> Bubbles is back. So welcome back for round two. It looks like 
Uh, Nancy, you started that one off. So, Shy starts this one off. Shy, is it Zootopia or Tangled? Tangled. Tangled gets a vote. Bubbles. Tangled was also in Zootopia. Yeah. In some of the pirated movies. Yep. <laughs> By Weaselton. <laughs> um, so I am going to go ahead and go with Zootopia on this one. Which means there's a type recognition coming down to Nancy. Nancy, is it oh. Zootopia? Oh, I've, now I have pressure on me. Oh. I, have I love both these movies. I love both of these movies. But I think my first instant when you said this is I love Zootopia. I think Zootopia is amazing. It is so funny. But I really just want to go for Tangled. Do it. Do it. You don't go do for Tangled. You feel, Nancy. You don't let anybody pressure you into anything else. Tangled moves on to uh, two to one to the next round. Bubbles starts us off on this one. Bubbles. Is it it's a five to zero versus five to zero? So we have two sweeps going against each other on this one. Is it Wreck It Ralph or Moana? Oh man, fuck us. Moana's in both of these too. <laughs> Wreck It Ralph. Also, Moana. Alan Tudyk's in both of these. Wreck It Ralph or Moana? Wreck It Ralph. Wreck It Ralph, it is. Rebecca Ralph gets a vote off of that one. Thank you, Brandy. Are you super? Uh, Nancy. Okay. Yep. Never mind. Okay, so I'm trying to go over like my whole logic as I as I need like a movie that's like iconic and I use and I'm like I, I gotta go wreck it, Ralph. I gotta go with it. Knocking off a high seed, wreck it, Ralph. will be moving on after this one, but Shay, Shy, shame on whatever, you shame, shame, shame from Shy. Shame. He's whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> dust it off my shoulder. Mm. It would have been Moana all the way. Well, what can I say? But you're welcome. <laughs> and fuck you, <laughs> Freddie. I would also like to hear what your um, vote would have been as well. You have not. Been it would have been Moana. Okay. Hands down, Moana, and it's it's basically for The Rock. I'm not a huge fan of The Rock in general, but again, the entire, the villainous, okay. especially him going to silently look at the camera, going, "What can I say? But you're welcome." It's like, "Yep, I got you pretty much over my knee, and you're fucked." Plus, uh, so many women's panties were wet. Yeah, very much. Uh, flooding everywhere, like an ocean. Yep. Speaking of oceans, too, like that dude, Maui, quite literally left a girl on an island to die. Yep. Mm -hmm. You would talk about a villain. Also, it does... stole the heart of Tafiti to give it to the people. Yeah, but what was she doing to to really help the people, though? That's kind of a Robin Hood type type thing. He's a villain to certain people, but. He's a villain now because we need to. They, they needed to redo that, but she's the one who's getting all mad because the humans are doing well and couldn't just go ahead and talk this out like demigod should. I no, need an origin story on this because when I'm imagining him, because his parents just threw him in the ocean, they're like, "Yeah, want him, right? That's sad." But like, who raised him? Because if the god did. Really Right. So if the gods are raising him, like he's not, he doesn't have like that same concept of the needs and stuff of an actual human because he's a demigod. Clearly he didn't have to eat anything while he was on so the island. So he's assuming like, Oh, you don't want to eat anything. Like, although he kind of in the back of his head knows something, he's got to know something, but I isn't mean, he kind of like Polynesian. No, Hercules? no. I'm going to I'm going to refute that bubbles because he he literally sings a song about giving them coconuts and food and stuff like that. No, but he, that doesn't necessarily mean that he has the understanding of the need for those. So I mean, he obviously eats the food like he was like, "Ooh, boat snack." Like talking about the chicken. 
But he didn't need that, but he can appreciate eating it when he gets it. So that doesn't mean that he understands that people need food to survive instead of just enjoying it to enjoy it. So actually, fun fact about that song. So that song references actual Polynesian legends about Maui. Maui is an actual figure of Mm -hmm. importance in Polynesian uh, culture. And he actually... He has several different deeds that he did to help the mortals. Mostly, I believe, um, and I am not an expert. I more of know this through like a uh, storytelling thing from like different uh, like vacation blogs and stuff that I watch and stuff. But it's basically he did a lot of these tasks to help the humans, but specifically his mother. Um, in the original, uh, in the original stories. Obviously, Disney does take liberties with mythology, but like so, that's like the things like with how he like he killed the eel and he gave them coconut trees. He lassoed the sun so they could have longer days. Um, it's all like it's they're really cool stories too. If people ever want to look them up about the actual Maui stories. So my point is, is that having a mother for a human, you you kind of figure that he would know. Yeah. That that she would need sustenance sustenance to survive, yeah. even though that he that he doesn't. So but leaving he was thrown out as a baby, like how would he know that if he's not raised because he's with it? he's helping his mom. But we also we don't know if the like the miss if in the universe of Moana if he has the same backstory because also so his mother's name in mythology is the character's name they used for Moana's mother. Um, is, and that's one of the things that they, they brought out. Hmm. Is, yeah, so it's it's possible maybe, that he, he in the movie has a different backstory. One person theorized that he might be Moana's father. <laughs> and then I was like, what? There is also the theory that he is David from Stitch, the guy that's interested in Nani. Because his necklace is Maui's fish hook. Hmm. Either way, Wreck-It, Wreck-It Ralph takes out Moana on this one, two to one. Nancy mm-hmm. starts us off. Is it Cars or Coco? This is five to zero and three to two. I love my son. It's Coco. <laughs> Just just for clarification on this one, is it Cars or Coco? It's Coco. Okay. Because you, you laughed halfway through that and yeah, all sorry. I could hear is C. I can clarify, I can, I can clarify the C, but that kind of goes on both of them. And... No, I'm sorry. It's just like I, lo- I love my child and he was he motivated me to vote Cars, but it's Coco. It's like, but it only goes so far. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't vote against a... Uh, I can't vote on a podcast that nobody really cares about uh, because of you. That's, <laughs> that's why. Shy. Uh, Cars. Coco. Coco. It's another vote and a win off of that one. Bubbles. Cars. Oh. Made her falls. Two to one. Coco moves on. Next up, Shay starts us off. Shay. <laughs> Give us your vote again, Freddie. I'm well, you're not. Oh, you weren't yes, asking. I, um, I said I, I would like to know moving forward. Okay. Well, going back then, because I didn't do it for the Tangled one either. Between mm-hmm. Jutopia and Tangled, I would have gone Tangled. Cars and Coco. Honestly, a toss up. Uh, probably Coco on this one. I, I like the Cars movie, but I think. Coco is. I like Cars better, but I think Coco is a better movie around. Yeah, it's it's the music for me. If, like if, I, it's, a, if it's one that's got good music, then it's it's. Got well, me. I mean, Cars has good good music too. At least one damn good song too, which is uh, "Life Is a Highway" from Ra- uh, Rascal Flatts. And even people who aren't really cunt, country fans aren't cunts aren't country fans. Uh, they probably are. Are <laughs> still can appreciate this movie, this that this song because it wasn't always a 
country song. It's just a country version of it. So, and the entire Chuck Berry ness, I still love the entire the the entire version of that one. But Coco, from beginning to end, is just it's a phenomenal looking movie. The, an, the uh, animation of that is perfect. I love the story involved with it. The twist ending, the twist ending, the twist. <laughs> Three quarters of the section, round through it is absolutely fantastic as well. So yeah, Coco would have would have gotten my vote on that one. What what I love though about Coco is I love like with the twist and with, with both the twist and the music is the fact that it's, take the song "Remember Me" is when mm-hmm. we're first introduced to it. It's this very upbeat kind of romantic "Remember Me," but then when you find out what its origin is, I'm and that's bald. almost. I bawled at the end of that movie. That is almost like this masterful move where they just, they change how it's sung. They change the tempo a little bit and they show this totally different version of the song, which almost makes him even more diabolical, the villain, and makes it as its first introduction where you could consider it a villain song because he took this thing. Oh, it is a villain that song. So, that was so personal and beautiful. And with the, the song to his daughter to tell him like, I'll be home and stuff. He killed his friend and then he twisted that song. And that is just so incredible. I will say that him not being, um, Hector de la Cruz not being his grandfather was not a shock to me. I was literally whispered to my my husband in the movie theater. I'm like, I don't think he is the grandfather. I, I, don't, I don't think so. And my husband's like, yeah, yeah, I know. I don't think he when, is either. Once they got to the pool, like the 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 opening of the opening of the pool scene, yeah. When they when they actually he seen him from across the room. That's when it, it kind of dawned on me, uh, which is before it was revealed to the audience. But you could tell at that point because it's like this. It just doesn't feel feel right. But I I can appreciate it though because if it's something majority of the people, it was a twist ending in a Disney movie. Yeah. Which isn't really heard of, and I I do consider "Remember Me" a villain song. It's also a hero song. Yeah, which I don't I don't remember, with the exception of uh, Prince Ali. Mm-hmm. I don't remember that ever being. There's mm-hmm. songs out there that is ever actually both a hero and a villain song, because and uh, Prince Ali, Jafar sings a reprised version of it, and. The first Aladdin movie when he reveals who Aladdin actually is. Yeah. But then again, Prince Ali, the original part of it is uh, actually kind awesome. of a villain song too, because at that point he's misrepresenting himself mm-hmm. who, who he is. But it's still a hero because he's the hero of the story. So. And at the end of the day, Ernesto de la Cruz can go fuck himself. And yeah. I'm pretty sure he did that. Well, and I also don't think that in. Uh, the Remember Me song, the lyrics were changed at all. It was just how it was sang. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Whereas the only difference. Ali, the lyrics are changed to fit who was singing the song. One was uh, self-glorifying. The the other one was uh, like if I don't come back type thing. Yeah. Just know that I love you. And that's one one's I love you, the other one's please love me type thing. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. Kind of what it is. So either way, Coco moves on two to one to the next round. Bubbles starts us off. Is it uh Brave moving on three to two or uh the Incredibles moving on two to one? Again, I love the incredible. I think I actually like the second Incredibles more, uh, where you see more of Jack Jack's like powers and stuff, and he fights with the raccoon. Um, num num cookies. Poor babysitter. Cookies. Right? I loved watching the babysitter little short video as well. <laughs> I do. I love all the little extra things on things. Um, but I do, I I absolutely, absolutely love Brave. I don't know if it's going to move on. It is, like I said, one of my favorite Disney movies. Um, and so that's going to be my vote. I would like to tell you, since there's four of us here, Pass the Parcel would be 
would be in play, by the way. Because that's how that's how that works. I shouldn't have to say that, but just in case. Oh, I um, Brave gets a particular vote off of that one. Nancy, is it Brave or uh, The Incredibles? See, like, Brave is a very beautiful movie, and I do enjoy it, but, like, I still feel like I have to go with Incredibles because, like, that one just for me just, like, kind of is a little bit higher. So I'm going to go Incredibles. It is a tie-break decision coming down to Shay. Shay, yeah, is it? it's going to be Incredibles. <laughs> yeah, it's the Incredibles. Uh, moves on two to one to the next round. Next up, Nancy starts us off. Nancy, is it uh, Princess and the Frog? Moving on three to two in a split vote, or Emperor's New Groove for this oh. five to zero sweep? Ooh, yeah! Come on, oh. that's an easy one. <laughs> it's an easy, easy one. one. But it's still a one that, like, I feel bad about. But it's Emperor's New Groove. Like, I don't want to, like, say, like, be that way to uh, Princess and the Frog. But it's Emperor's New Groove. Now, I'm salty about the Princess and the Frog now. Y'all got out in Canto. It was a split vote, though. So, there's that. I'm pretty sure I voted in Canto as well. Sure. Uh, Shy. I was on your. I was on your level. All right. Is it? Is it Princess and the Frog or New Groove? Oh, it's Emperor's New Groove. Yes, another vote. Is it a sweet bubbles? It's a sweet bitches. Of course, it's Emperor's New Groove. I'm gonna start making tumblers, and I think that I want to make a uh, Cusco's poison tumbler as like one of my first ones. And I haven't decided if I wanted to. A llama. Like, <laughs> You're supposed to be dead. But like, <laughs> oh my gosh! But I fucking like that movie. I could just like at random quote it, just like walking okay, around. But I need you. I need you to make a part on the tumbler though, so you can peel down. <laughs> this is like poison. The poison for Cusco. The poison minutes precisely to kill Cusco. Cusco's poison. That poison. That poison? Okay. So I have I have a few ideas. Box I, in a I box. want to get I want to get like a color transfer, color changing um, thing, like a cricket paper. I don't a transfer paper. I don't know what to call it. Just what the vinyl paper. I want to yeah. get changing and so could you imagine it changing like from like the skull to like the the llama, the llama. llama? that would be so that would be i would take, i would buy that money. one take my money take my money all of the money it's going to you <laughs> emperor's new groove moves on in a sweep uh side note we've never had an item from any where one, I think this is 145, 140, this is 146 episode. We've never had anything go through the entire thing sweeping it. Uh, that is the second time in a row that Emperor's New Groove moved, moved on in a sweep. He's and, bastardness and seeing which one of us is going to turn out to be the bastardiest of all bastards. And it There's just, only one other movie in here that still has that ability and we'll be getting to that right now actually uh, shy starts us off on this one or did you start that one off or i, I ended it <laughs> i think shy starts this one because i think nancy started yeah the okay one. so shy shy starts this one off shy is it Big Hero 6 or Meet the Robinsons? Meet the Robinsons, by the way, was the one that it was asleep on last round. Ready. Mm. I love it to make that makes you guys make noises. You pervert. <laughs> no, I'm a pro at it by this point. Shit. I've been called that too. I think the 
this is why Freddie likes our like all ladies cast. He likes the shenanigans. That's such, oh God, that's such a hard one. What she said. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I don't I call that too. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, oh. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go purely off of uh off of my gut as as much as I love Big Hero Six, I could just keep rewatching Meet the Robinsons, so I'm gonna have to go with Meet the Robinsons. <laughs> um, that is that you did have a load to blow as well. So there's always an option or pass to It parts. wasn't it wasn't the appropriate time. It, it wasn't the appropriate time to blow your load, no. even though you called me a son of a bitch. Yes. <laughs> is that the qualifications now? Son of a bitch, my load is blown. <laughs> I, w I, I would have, I would have had to have yelled it more angry. Then maybe I would have. Oh, there you go. All right. Bubbles. Meet the Robinsons. Gets another one. Is it a sweep? They're deer off Nancy. Is it Meet the Robinsons or uh, Big Hero Six? Mute. Dang it, it's because I was laughing so hard before. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love Big Hero 6, but I think it has to be Meet the Robinsons. Three to zero, Robinsons moves on. I mean, bowler hat guy. Yeah. Bowler hat. <laughs> yes. Let me shed Goob. some light on the situation. The situation. Goob. Oh my god, what was her name? What was the name of the bowler hat? Doris. I, Doris. I was like, I was, I was like, I had it in my head like for two seconds and then it just drifted away. Much like the hat does. Exactly. It was just Robinson moves on three to uh three to zero to the next round. Uh so bubble started that one off. So Nancy starts this one off. Nancy. Did I is start it that one off? No, Was I started it? that one. Yeah, okay, so that. Bubbles Bubbles starts this one off. I'm half right. Bubbles, this is one of the problems only having three people voting. It just goes so quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Bubbles, is it I mean, Luca? I like it like that sometimes. Is it Luca or uh, Monsters Incorporated? Luca. I love that movie so freaking much. I will, again, it's one of those movies that I actively seek out. It used to be Monsters Incorporated. Don't get me wrong. I super extra love that. I love the little sticker over Mike Wazowski's face. I love the fact that when I went to Walmart not too long ago and they had it on the shelves, his face was covered. I appreciated the commitment that whoever did that had put into this, okay? I really appreciate Monsters, Inc. for what it is. Luca, on the other hand, like I said, it is amazing. It's a coming-of-age story. It is great because it's one of those, like, as a kid and growing up in a time where you really just bonded with other kids riding bikes and doing the just the bullshit, okay? like Streetlight rule. Exactly. And that's really what it is. And then like her dad was very much on the like, hey, where is where is Alberto? Like he was so fucking concerned about a kid that he knew didn't have any parents. Like you knew he knew like he had that look in his eye and he's like, oh, these boys are here and they're staying in my treehouse. Like you knew he knew. And he was a team player and then just took him on like good for the dad. Luca for the win. I just absolutely love Luca. Sorry, I went on a rant. So I with me. I do it There's all only time. Here, so you're fine. Nancy. Yeah, no. So like, that's the thing is, is I was just sitting here like trying to think it over, and I real, I really, really do love um, Luca, and I will, I will shout from the heavens how great that movie is, and how that movie and all those three other movies that came out around the same time from Pixar all should be given love and respect. That being said. As we were speaking, we just mentioned Monster Think in my head. It's da 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 Monster Think. Type break decision coming down to Shy. Shy, do you do you want to know who's facing in the quarterfinals? Nope, it's Monster Think. Jay. 
just because I know Bubbles is going to ask, yes, my, my vote totally would have gone to Luca on that one. Just like Meet the Robinsons on the previous one as well. I appreciate Nancy. that. Thank you. Nancy finish, helps finish out uh, round two. Is it Inside Out or Wally? Both of these have a vote against it. Uh, by the way, my husband has now finally showed up. <laughs> Hi, hubby. Hi, hubby. Hi, hubby. <laughs> it's good to see you. Welcome home. Finally, we're just moving in here. So this is the new. He hasn't been on the show yet, has he? No, he hasn't. Oh, oh my I... goodness. You're, you're going to have to join us one of these days. I mean, yeah. you can still join us. There's an open spot because I'm, I'm, I'm not voting. So. Yeah, so there's an open spot for, for you. Oh, and then also, this is, the, this is his co host. Hi, co host. Hello. We call him co host. <laughs> we were we calling him the worst looking Jeremy, but now he's just Jeremy. <laughs> I mean, I don't think he'd qualify for worst looking Jeremy anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to say thank you. Well, you're you're also like that small on my screen, so size matters. Depends on the day. <laughs> so we're I, I, I still don't think you'd qualify for a worse looking Jeremy, but uh, thank you, I appreciate so, that. So, guys, I'm voting right now on Inside Out versus Wally. Inside Out versus Wally. Wally. Oh, no. Inside Out. Wally. Inside Out. <laughs> Wally's the better. Inside Out's better. <laughs> And this is what you get from their podcast. It's literally this. Um, hey, Nancy, it's a core memory. It is a core memory. Uh, let me see. But my core memory is uh, watching Wally and then writing to my newspaper about how amazing Wally was. So I'm going to go with Wally. Wally gets a vote from Nancy Shy. That was such a cueism. It, is it really was. Me. Yeah. What writing to my newspaper on Wally? Like I, yeah. that was definitely a cute thing. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be inside out for me. <laughs> Gets two votes. He does get the win. Bubble finishes out. Josh would be so disappointed in me right now because he loves Wally, and I know how much he loves Wally. But I love Inside Out, so I love you, babe. If you are watching or listening to this later, mm-hmm. Inside Out is my vote. Inside out gets a nod in the win. That finishes out round two. Be right back right after this break. Ready? I still need your uh, answer on this one. Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, inside out, probably. But I I know that Wally's more poignant, and it should get more grace in it than it does. But like I, I think Inside Out's a lot more fun. So, if it came down to cutting hairs, I would probably go for uh, go for in, inside on inside out on this one as well. So, is that like my scenario? You have both DVDs in your hand, and you're like, "This is the one I'm watching." Probably, but it, it depends on on, uh, on my mood. It was one of those things that if I have something playing in the background, it's Wally because it just gives a better feel good vibe to it, like a aw type vibe to it, much like Hallmark movies type thing. You don't watch Hallmark movies, you listen to Hallmark movies. It was completely different, for me at least. You uh, know what, maybe that's why, okay, because like I think in pictures, like that's just how I think. And so mm-hmm. like I'll put on a show that I've already seen while I'm doing chores because like while uh-huh. I'm listening to it, I can picture it while I'm yep. doing it. And <laughs> yeah, and I, I absolutely agree with you with Hallmark glad, movies, um... because they all follow like the same basic storyline and stuff. Like you can listen to it and you can really like, if you get a glimpse of like, who's the characters or whatever, you can like pretty much watch it as you're listening to it, doing whatever. I'm with you on that, Freddie. But yeah, my brain isn't the, isn't the only one that's that way. (laughs) That's exactly (laughs) what the home. uh, Well, the thing is Hallmark movies gives out a certain vibe to it. And your, your vibe is, is, is what you have, what you're playing in the background. I, I might be trying to edit a show, which means I'm listening to the show, but the TV is going on in the background, and there's just enough you can kind of hear it. Yeah. But you, it also, the, the show itself or the movie itself gets off, give off the vibe. And Hallmark movies is usually a pretty nice, mellow, not too terribly harsh 
vibe to it, which is the reason why it's usually playing in the background when nobody's watching it. It's either that or Paw Patrol. Oh, Paw Patrol. Oh my gosh. I mean, even, I, I've, I, I've, I've been trying to get my kid back into Bluey, but he's just, he's being, being mean about it. And he moved on to kindergarten. Now he's, he's decided he wants something else. Well, my, mine has decided that Bluey is cooler for a kindergartner than Daniel Tiger, and Daniel Tiger is not cool anymore, Mom. Is he yucky? I agree with him. Well, I mean, like, I don't disagree, but I mean, I still like Daniel Tiger as well. I Me think. too. Me I like my, Maybe we should just watch Daniel Tiger without him. The background of my phone, my the back, the cover, not background, the cover of my background type thing for my phone is... 11 lessons that adults can learn from Louie. And it's something yeah. that I see every day. I don't read it, but it's there just in case. So whatever. So anyway, before I became a podcaster, I never thought all these requests for five-star reviews actually mattered. Well, I was wrong. But being the bastards we are, we're not just going to ask you to spend your valuable three seconds with nothing in return because it's kind of rude. But we'll trade you for it. If you send us a screenshot of your five-star review, either on YouTube or whatever your favorite podcaster is, along with a matchup you want us to vote on, we will not only shout you out on the show as a thank you, but we'll do your matchup live on air. It will be our thank you to review. Today's thank you to review comes from a woman named Keisha. Uh, Keisha. Keisha says... My Keisha says, my name is Keisha, and I'm a big fan. I don't know what happened to Jeremy, but thank you for not having him back. <laughs> he was super creepy. Seriously, <laughs> it, I, I hear his voice and turn it off. I tried to wait a few minutes uh, to get used to it, but sorry, I couldn't. In honor of him being gone, I have an open question. I hope this is in time for Disney Part 2. I know. Like, I, I read this, and I started laughing. Thank you, Keisha. Thank you, Keisha. <laughs> I, uh, she, 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 she sent me this on Monday. So, like, right, right after Disney Part 1 aired on YouTube. Because we didn't record it. We recorded it, but we didn't. It wasn't live type thing. So, she didn't get a follow along. But she wa was watching it. Anyway. Uh, I hope this got to you in part for Di for Disney Part Two. What is the biggest ooh moment with the opposite sect that you've ever seen or heard in life or in movies? Keep your heads up, Keisha Barstow. So one, thank you, Keisha. That was a that was a good laugh. Um, I uh, I appreciate it. I, I I don't like to talk shit about other people. I really don't. Um, mainly because it kind of feels like they're living rent free in your head and they really shouldn't. So um, for those who don't know, Jeremy is gone for a reason. I'm not going to release what the reason is. Uh, it doesn't matter at this point. What's done is done. It's been solved. It's been taken care of. I personally wish him the best in his future endeavors. I really do. Uh, he's, he's a good guy. He just got caught up in a situation that he shouldn't have. And it became a pattern that uh, I, it was too much shit to continually to deal with. So as long, along with the entire trying to phase out the entire thing about um, for dexterity purposes, as we were talking about last week and not really having that said anymore due to who, who it came up with. I'm going to try to start facing out mentionings and stuff like that as far as he, he goes as well. But again, more power to him. I wish him the best in the future endeavors. I will. I'm going to start with Bubbles on this one because I guarantee you she's had some horror stories. Bubbles, what is your ooh moment? Oh, God. Okay. So I do. I like, I do. I have a lot of like horror stories. Actually, as a matter of fact, just a few days ago, um, Ironically enough, I work on Fourth Street, and uh, I was uh, I was walking back from meeting one of my clients, and and that somebody. Uh, I hope it was a good <laughs> corner. I'm oh, thank you. Anybody <laughs> is curious at this point. I'm 
I am a notary and the like thing on Fourth Street. Is, is that is that what they is that what they call it now? Because <laughs> I'm totally a notary too. <laughs> and boy, do I love watching. My favorite part of my job. <laughs> The way the fingers move. Just... <laughs> it gently just brushes across it. I say you get one of those koosh balls in there too, as, as like a pen, pen topper. You never know. <laughs> and then I I'm going to make you snort, Bubble. I am. That, that's my goal. And by the time I'm done, my mark is left right on there. Just All over it. On there. Black and blue ink. <laughs> However, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so, but like walking, walking back, I was just, I was walking, I was looking cute that day. So I do, I appreciate a good compliment. So don't get me wrong. Say, girl, you look good. And I will say, thank you. You know, but this person proceeded to ask if I was working and I was like, well, fuck, I'm just going to keep walking. I'm not even going to entertain this. Right. Um, so he asks again and I'm like, okay, like, no, I'm just going to keep walking. Like, I'm just not going to entertain you. And so then he asks again, well, unfortunately for this person, I just happen to have a mood disorder and I'm in a period of my mood disorder where I'm just a little extra spicy. So then I turned around and decided to harass this guy back. Did so you not hear, my, moment, did I you don't not hear my silence the first three times you asked? <laughs> Exactly. I felt like I was, I felt like I was absolutely using my wise mind here because I ignored him three times. I was very polite, but he also did not like that either. Um, he did not like me turning around and telling him that he was crusty and gross. And I did not appreciate his audacity either. So I did, I did make it out safely, but either way, that is ew. That is gross. If you are ignored when you initially ask if somebody is wor a working girl, just keep moving on. Don't be the crusty old gross. Just tell person. him he couldn't afford it. Right. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, first off, even if I was working right now, like if you have to approach me, you can't afford me. Like that's, that's going to be like, if a you thing. see me out here, you can't afford me. <laughs> right. And like I said, I was super freaking cute. I was in that cute little like butterfly, like corset thing that I just got. And my jeans, my ripped jeans, like I was looking super adorbs. And this guy was like, you look like a hooker. I was like, you know, oh, there's a town. Angry. Right. Right now we're do on Bracketology. We're doing a, um, bracket called uh, Dirty Destinations. And there is a town in Oklahoma called Hooker. There it is. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> she frequents we have, it. We have 60, what? We have 64. It started out with 75. We have 64 different town names that are dirty. Just like, for instance, like Climax, Michigan, or something like that. Um, uh, that never happens in Michigan. Cum Cummings, Iowa. Oh. <laughs> blue ball. There's stuff like blue ball and stuff like that in there too. It's just uh, <laughs> dick shooter oh. is in there too. <laughs> just, anyway, no, it, it it was a fun bracket to do uh, to to go up. Anyway. Uh, Shy, uh, your ooh moment. I I feel like I've had quite the the plethora of ooh moments, especially here in the last little while. Word of the day. But um, but the the main one that comes to mind was back. Uh, at the start of the pandemic, um, I was working in Beckley and uh, I uh, I had had a mask on that I brought from home and this guy that worked up the road um, at the hospital is just has this blank look on his face and um, 
uh, he comes up to the counter I was at and he goes, you must be really into S and M. And I'm just like, why? And he's like, well, your, your mask, it's got a zipper on it. It's like, so, so that, that means that I'm into freaky shit because my mask has a zipper on it. You sick fuck. Don't be that guy, guys. Come on. You should just know, Shy. Like that's just a universal sign. All zippers means kink. Well, no, and I, well, the point the point of it was though is because you could only unzip one little corner of it, and it was so I could drink my Duncan. <laughs> Duncan these nuts. <laughs> no, I should have just been like, you think your you think your dick can get through that zipper? <laughs> Oh. All right, Nancy, you're having mic issues, which is the reason I m muted you a little bit because you're having weird, weird feedback stuff. So, I think so. The door is is open ajar, so I can go close it. If that would help. Well, it's I, I don't know if it's is that or just your mic because you're getting. Okay. Uh, like, I I don't it's know how to how now. to describe it. Yeah, it's it sounds fine now. It's just feedback. yeah, it's a weird feedback type thing. Anyway, Nancy, what is your e moment? So like I was I, I was listening to you and like I I, I had some that kind of come up, but like this is like years and years ago back when I was in high school, is I I was awkward awkward chick who I have ASD so I do not get these things especially as a teenager, but I literally had a guy who said like oh where 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 does he, where do you get your good good looks from. And I'm like, well, I've been, well, I've been told I get, I, I, I get a lot of my good looks from, I must get my good looks from my mom. And then he says, well, she must have had a big ass like you too. It's rude. I mean, some guys uh, liked it. It's considered a compliment. Excuse me. Uh, this ass is all mine. My mother has none. Thank you. And then this is also the same guy who basically talked because I, I had a, I had a long-term boyfriend in high school, who I was like, I was with this guy on and off for a long time. And this is another story. Was not a great guy, but um, he made a whole comment. He's like, "Oh yeah, Nancy with Parker. I bet Parker gets all sorts of freaky." <laughs> and I'm just like, "What the hell?" And this was also a guy who, like, my ex boyfriend thought was one of his his closest friends. And I was just like, "He and was I trying already to get the him, ass." I, <laughs> I outright told him I hated him. I hated him. He's like, oh, no, you just don't get his humor. I'm like. As a guy, uh, I, I'm i stupid. Um, mm -hmm. And I say that in the best way possible. The it, it's it's not it's not that I'm stupid. I'm I am oblivious as fuck. Yeah. Guys in general, unless you're completely stuck up their own ass half the time. Uh, don't realize when they're getting hit on. They also don't really care a majority of the time if somebody's being creepy. Because it's just not something they actually notice. Because guys in general don't get compliments a lot. Women get a lot more compliments than guys are. It's a lot, it's a lot more socially accept acceptable for a guy to give a woman a compliment, even though, depending on where that compliment is or who's given it to it, it, it who's given it gives a different standpoint uh and i go with the entire christian gray type thing yeah where if that was a guy in the middle of kansas with a with a trailer it wouldn't have gone that way type thing mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't know yeah but it, it just it just depends on looks and attract a, 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 attractiveness, the money that, that her person has, uh, the ability to flirt and everything else. But I've been told recently that I get hit on a lot. But I married and I don't notice. So there are probably a lot of times where women have been creepy, but I just don't perceive it that way. However... To, to be fair, though, I feel like women are not as creepy flirting as guys are. 
Oh, I think. Me. <laughs> I am. I am awkward as hell when I'm flirting. I feel and if I'm awkward. if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to flirt, I'm awkward as hell. But if I'm not trying to flirt, there's a lot of times that I'm considered flirting when I'm not actually flirting, uh, flirting with you. I'm just being. I'm not saying polite. I'm being to the point where uh, we're talking. I'm. I may be stretching what I should be saying a little bit further than I really should. But I also believe in an open conversation type thing as well with, with people. And if you, if you say, Hey, that's a little bit too far. I stop it. But I, I get told once that that's where, that's where the problem is with the majority of guys is like, they just don't take that original no as a no. They've got, but to, also, they've got I, to go for the fourth round of silence. <laughs> I also know a lot of girls that will say no and then get mad when you don't chase after them. Yeah. That is so true. Yeah, it's kind of a mix, mix it for guys. So I can't, uh, Keisha, I can't give you one cause I'm stupid and I don't pay attention to that, to, to that kind of stuff. So please take it on the, on as far as the rest of the ladies here today. Uh, Jamie couldn't give her answer, but I'm pretty sure she had a really good one as well that one as well so uh we'll be right back for round three i'm gonna mute my stuff real quick yeah no on a serious note though like 10 out of 10 like i don't ever feel like super weird when a girl flirts with me or like i always feel <laughs> Awkward flirting, no matter what, whatever it is. Like, I don't get like that. Like, oh my God, like, don't be a creep. Whereas like, I will get like that, like weird creep vibe sometimes from just dudes. Like, it, like I said, if the, if the dude across the way was like, girl, you look good. Like I would take you home. Cool. Like, thank you. Leave it at that. Just end it there. Cause anything past that at that point, like you were kind of funny. Like you, you were hitting that fucking borderline of being uncomfortable. Just walk away from there, you know? You, that's as weird as I would like you to get. Don't follow me down the street asking me if I'm working. Like, that's what, like, like I said, I don't, for spicy workers out there that may listen, like, I totally, absolutely support your spicy work and things like that. And I am so sorry because I'm sure you guys run into that kind of behavior all the time. And it is gross. I once had a guy when, when I had first moved to the, um, to the city of Albany, um, I had a guy who, as I was walking home from church, literally pulled in his car right in front of me, blocking me off from the sidewalk to one, asked me if I was someone he knew. And I said, no. And he said, where are you going? Can I help you? you I'm like, no, be? no, I'm just, <laughs> and I was just, I was also like, I'm very awkward. It was like, the, it was, it wasn't even like you for me. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. Cause it's like, he well, literally. And- that's a bit much. Well, one yeah. of the bad things about that too is that, like, I I live in a, I live in a small town. There's only like like ten thousand people. Uh, I've I've been in a point in my life where I had to walk everywhere I went, and I live in a town where you could probably walk from one one edge of the town to the other edge of the town. It's about probably thirty minutes if you're just walking, type thing. Uh, driving, walking, and uh, I've had to do that, and I've had to do that in really bad weather, really good weather, and what up. I'm also the type of person to pick up people who are walking, male, female, whatever. I will pick up a dude on, like, walking down the highway in a heartbeat. I will not pick up a girl. I won't. Not because I'm the type of person that, that refuses to help females, because I don't think they need help or whatever. I just don't want to be put into a t- type of situation where it's a he, he said, she said type moment. And I get screwed over. Because I don't have cameras in the car. I don't have a mic or anything else. The only thing I could do is turn my f- phone on to uh, record everything that's going on. But even then, I don't think we should be in a, in a society like that. And guys, girls, or whatever being this way, uh, it... 
hinders people who do need help in mm-hmm. s- situations like that. But yeah, I, I won't. I will not pick up even if if it's a guy and a girl. I will keep driving. I no, will if there's a girl on. <laughs> if there's a girl on the on the side of the road needing like car trouble type stuff, not pulling over. I'm just not. There's too there's too many there's too many legal issues. There's there's she she may have a taser on her, and even if I announce who I am or my intentions or anything else going on, I still may get tased just because of what some other jerk out there have have done to her or, or done to her mom or done to her aunt or sister or whatever along those her gay cousin or her straight cousin or whatever going down the line. It does. It just, we don't, we don't do that anymore. I've so, seen far too many like murder documentaries. <laughs> what if they're what? What if your wife's with you? Oh, I, I, I definitely wouldn't do it at that point. Guy, guy or girl, I wouldn't do it. Cause she doesn't believe in picking up hitchhikers. She just doesn't. There's, there's, there's too many safety risks. It For makes me. so much sense. And this is where like my like weirdness and like my, cause I grew up in that small town too, before I came, like, I won't now, but I used to pick up hitchhikers like in my small, but we all like kind of like we knew one of them, his name was walking Wade and everybody knew who he was and like why he was walking instead of driving and stuff like that. Like it was a couple of them or then, then like, I don't know, like we, my brother and I ended up picking up just a rando once. Um, that was a cool experience, but at the same time, it was a terrible idea. We're teenagers. Uh. <laughs> my one of my favorite things of all time. There's a guy who uh, I I was coming home from like an, an event in my hometown. I was dri- driving up here, and a and a guy was walking up there it was like 75 degrees outside but there was like no shade and so that 75 degrees ain't bad when, when there's no shade going on and no clouds or anything else that that could be hot <laughs> i i'm like well okay the front front seat's kind of full because i i do I do door dash so a whole bunch of stuff in there i'm like just just go ahead and hop in the back and whatever and he 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 thanked me for the ride and blah 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 and he he having a conversation he's like he goes so um what uh what would happen if i was like a like a serial killer or something like that get the fuck I out go, of my car right now i go yeah but what were the odds that you would have two serial killers from the same car at the same time <laughs> <laughs> luckily he laughed mainly because he kind of had to <laughs> anyway uh, getting yeah. back to the show. Welcome back for round three and beyond. These next four matchups of the last time to pass the parcel uh, or steal a vote. Looks like Bubbles and Nancy are the only two people that have to steal a vote left. And everybody has passed the parcel because uh, we had somebody leave on us halfway through the show, which is completely okay because she has some some other stuff to do. So, Shy starts us off on this one. Is it Tangled? Or Emperor's New Groove. Emperor's New Groove. Emperor's New Groove gets a vote. Bubbles. I love Tangled so much. I freaking do too, but I mean you can't you can't outdo the Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> right? For portability. Pascal, he so adorbs. Oh my gosh. And, and I my think newest- Tangled Tangled probably has one of the best soundtracks too. I love right? all the songs. I need to get one was actually in my wedding. So, (laughs) see, and then like I had a dream, wasn't it? (laughs) No, (laughs) (laughs) it would have been perfect. I need a new skirt because to like go with my one of my newer corsets because it's definitely like a tangled Rapunzel like color scheme to it, and I love Ren Fairs. Um, and so now I just need to like doll it up a little bit. However, again, the Emperor's New Groove is definitely my vote because it is just a gem of a movie. It's a national treasure that should forever stay sacred. All right, Nancy, is it Emperor's New Groove or Tangled? Oh, it's Emperor's New Groove. Yes, another vote and the win. Three to zero. 
on to the next round. Bubble starts us off. Bubbles. Is it uh, Coco or Monsters Incorporated? Monsters Incorporated. Damn it, I dropped my cap. That sucks. It Monster didn't have the fall sound, by the way. No, it didn't because it went directly in, uh, in, my, in between my legs, which means it had things to hit on the way down. Monsters Incorporated gets that particular vote. Nancy, is it Monster Incorporated or Coco? I make that sound a lot too. Um, I'm going to go with Monsters Incorporated. Gets another one. Uh, Shy, finish us up. Monsters Inc. Three and out. Moving on to the final four. Nancy starts us off on this one. Was that a sweep? Did it you? was a sweep. Three and zero. Is it? Wreck it, Ralph, or Meet the Robinsons? It's Meet the Robinsons. Chai? Mmm, <laughs> shit. I've been called that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with Wreck it, Ralph on that one. Oh! Finally, Meet the Robinsons gets a vote against it. It is one to one bubbles. Is it Robinson's or Wreck It Ralph? It's Robinson's. 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 <laughs> Moves on two to one, faces a three to zero in the next round. Shy starts <laughs> this one off. That was last like time. Seconds. This is the last time for Bubbles or Nancy to steal a vote. Or for anybody to use past the parcel. Bubbles. Is it The Incredibles or Inside Out? You know what? I will go ahead and I will pass the parcel on this one. This is 100% Inside Out. There's no, I, I can't stand The Incredibles. There's maybe a couple lines in that movie that is half uh, halfway decent, but like I like The Incredibles too better. And you're and you're and you're fucking wrong. <laughs> like it just it doesn't doesn't warrant anything. So uh, Inside Out. Plus, I, I love the fact that um, uh, Bing Bong, the little yeah, was not on the posters at all or in the previews at all or anything mm -hmm. else because they wanted they had the forethought on that one to make sure that he was a secret until people saw the movie even though he was a turning point for the movie so mm -hmm. I, I i gotta appreciate that one for him inside out gets my particular vote which means it gets bubbles vote in this in this one nancy Do is I it also get the power to use my steal a vote and gift it never had it happen but is it a possibility or is it you is it like a coupon you can't match with other coupon offers? No, because we we did um we had uh somebody blow their load and pass the parcel in the same vote. So last last week. Yeah, but it skipped through so like you they blew their load first. They're like boop, 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 blow my yeah. load, gets back to them. And, and then, then they passed they passed the parcel to you. Yeah, but it was in the same round, but it wasn't the same time or the same. I'll, I'll allow it, but for fu for future reference, I would say that you have to say that at the same time. At but same both time. of, but it would go to whoever the host is that day. So your double vote would go to the person that you're passing the parcel to. Okay, I grant my. Steal a vote. I will, since you didn't, you weren't aware of that. I will allow you to do any of the three of us. Oh, I thought it just goes to whoever you pass the parcel to. That—that's what I'm saying. But since you didn't know about it, this is a 
new thing that we're just doing on the fly. If you choose, if you didn't think that I, I, I would, that I chose right, you can oh. pass it on to Nancy or Shay as well. So. Oh, okay. Well, I was just going to pass it on to you. All right. So uh, I'm going to go with inside out for the second one as well, because there's no point. Um, which means inside out, we'll be moving on to the next round. I'm going, I'm going to still, um, Nancy's vote on this one because she's the only one to blow her load. So she's the only one to use another thing, I guess. And so, I think you stole Shy's last time too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I stole Shy's last time. So I can't, I shouldn't do both of them. Shy, is it uh, I will Incredibles? Hold, uh, hold something against me. Uh, Shy, is it The Incredibles or uh, Inside Out? Uh, the Incredibles. <laughs> so, Nancy, mm -hmm. if you would have voted, would it have been Inside Out or The Incredibles? <sighs> Nostalgia was telling me Incredibles, but my gut was telling me Inside Out. So... I, I, I think, I think probably in the moment I would have been blinded by nostalgia and I would have voted incredible, but I'm glad that my vote was stolen. So, so, so apparently bubbles trusted me in the right, in the right situation. We have our final four. I gotta let that one not dry out. Final countdown. Oh, copyright. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nancy starts us off. I'm going to give you one of these four options. You choose one of them. That is the, that whatever matchup that happens to be in currently, you can choose one of those. Uh, is it Emperor's New Groove, Inside Out, Meet the Robinsons, or uh, Monsters Incorporated? Those are our final four. Mm. We'll start with Monsters Incorporated. It's going to be Monsters Incorporated versus Inside Out. Mm. Let's you guys are making a whole bunch of noises tonight. It's what I'm good at. <laughs> I've been told that too. So it's, it's, it's the it's the getting him to shut up. That's a trick. <laughs> Um, I think so. It's Inside Out versus Monsters Incorporated. Yep. Okay. Hmm. You know, I could always say that, like, if we didn't have Monsters Incorporated, we wouldn't have Pete Doctor, and then we wouldn't have Inside Out. But I'm just gonna go with Inside Out. <laughs> Inside Out gets a nod off of that one. Shy. Monsters Inc. Which means there's a tie-break decision coming down to bubbles. We do not know who was facing in the finals, so I can't give you that one. Inside out. And we don't have Q to make up jokes. Y'all are fucking killing me. Sorry. I love <laughs> I've, it. I've been told I that, too. Inside out. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> You know what's so sad, Freddie? Is like you're sitting here trying to get me to snort, and I had already done it, but I was muted, and you just oh no, you but you you've done it multiple times, even when you're not muted, and I'm just I'm just trying to get it to do it again, because like it's just it's just funniest thing for me. On the flip side of that one, by the way, shy uh, shy starts us off. Is it Emperor's New Groove or Meet the Robinsons? Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, it's a vote. Bubbles. By the way, um, Mia Robinson's was the other one that was that didn't have a vote against it. So I was really hoping that somebody wouldn't vote against Wreck It Ralph because it would have been the two movies in this entire thing that had been sweeps all the way through. But you voted against Meet the Robinsons, so Yeah, I fucked it up. Okay, so I'm just gonna I I um I just gotta squirt my gun. Okay. 
Bubbles has decided to blow her load on this particular one. <laughs> Screams, Nancy, is it Meet the Robinsons or Emperor's New Groove? Oh. I love I love um, Meet the Robinsons, but I think it's going to be Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, and Bruce and Groove. Finish this out, Bubbles. Oh my goodness. I love Meet the Robinson so fucking much. Like, that is, it's a beautiful movie, and it definitely should have more love to it. Like, I feel like it should have definitely gone farther than it did. Um, Emperor's New Groove, on the other hand, it is just a fucking, like I said, it is a treasure. Mm -hmm. it is <laughs> it is, it is, it's got everything. It's got the cartoon. It's got the adult humor. It's got the kid humor. It's fucking family fun and friendly. And it's full of laughs every time. Like, that's it. It's Emperor's New Group, if you didn't get it. I, I, I just needed it for Audio Land. <laughs> Two to one versus three to zero and it's going to be in the finals, but we're heading up to third place right now. Uh, Bubbles. Is it Monsters Incorporated or Meet the Robinsons? Meet the Robinsons. <laughs> Gets a vote. Nancy. I personally think it's Meet the Robinsons. Gets another one, which means it is going into third place. But Shy, is it Monsters Incorporated or Meet the Robinsons? I'm just going to be a bastard and say it's Monsters, Inc. <laughs> just do it. When was the last time, with the exception of New Groove, when was the last time you voted for something that won? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a, quite a few times. I just can't remember the last time. I mean, Monsters, Inc. did move into the final four with a three to zero. So I, I think that's probably the last time that you actually voted for something that won. <laughs> just leave me be. I just say it. Leave All me right. alone. She's like, I just know good me, movies. Me, the Robinsons hits, hits third place on this one, which means it is a Nancy starts us off on this one. Uh, Bubbles and Nancy both blew their load on this one. The only load not to be blown yet would be shy so nancy Way to hold is, that, it, shy. is it emperor's new groove or inside a out the, a minute for the long game it's emperor's new groove it's emperor's Gets a new vote. groove shy emperor's new groove bubbles <laughs> oh my god did we do it it's emperor's fucking new groove with a fucking sweep bitches through the whole fucking thing it swept the whole fucking bracket just right under the rug. Although I appreciate your intensity on this one, there is still one more vote. Ah, god damn it. Fuck. <laughs> I was so excited. I, I really <laughs> hate to burst moment. your bubble on this one, Bubbles, but like it is. It's Wait, one more so, vote. So does that bring it to Emperor's New Groove against Meet the Robinsons? No, it is Emperor's New Groove versus Hercules. Oh, Hercules, dang. Hercules won last week. Fuck. Oh, dang. You know what? Fuck it. Emperor's new group. <laughs> it's gonna win. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I kind of got to agree uh, with that. All right. I'm a fortune teller today. <laughs> finals. 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 <laughs> Only one load left to blow. That is shy. Shy. Is it Emperor's new groove or Hercules? Emperor's new groove. <laughs> Gets a vote. She's not going to blow her load on this one. Bubbles. <laughs> Two thumbs way, 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 way up for the Emperor's New Groove. I was <laughs> about to smack you if you didn't. <laughs> I'm, like, really? like, I'm ready to buy a plane ticket just to fuck things up. I'm going to knock your desk over. <laughs> I, You know what? I would love for you to try. <laughs> Just just let me move my bottle of booze real quick and you should be fine. Okay. <laughs> Some important shit matters. Ever in the groove does win the entire thing. Nancy, not to try to sway your vote. But 
We are 146 episodes in. Mm-hmm. This has never happened, mainly because of Q. Uh, we have never had a single item, either movie, quote, song, whatever, go through its entire respective bracket with not a single vote against it. You have that opportunity to make history today by voting Emperor's New Groove, or you can negate that by voting for Hercules. Mm. The, the decision is completely yours. Freddie, memo to me, memo to me. Maim me after after maim you after my meeting. It's gonna be in first new groove. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Making history! <laughs> like I oh. still got that same energy, Freddie, because that's oh. awesome. And the Emperor's New Groove absolutely deserved it. I was gonna say, hold on, where's my where's my soundboard over here? Because I've got a I've got a great I've got a great so. one for this. <laughs> I, that was an antagonizing final one. I'm like, I have to pick a pick between those two. And so I'm just like, I'm just gonna pull Hades to you. I um, since this has never happened, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this to you, to you guys. We call the Bukake episode. This has happened twice now. When that particular item has happened, so I'm gonna leave it to you of what to name this particular occurrence where we have had one item go through the entire entire bracket the this gang particular gang. one being two weeks being a <laughs> i i didn't even hear what you said that's that part I'm going to hear it when I go to edit the show, but. <laughs> so the gang win. Oh, no, it's because you can't say it again because <laughs> we have to let him be surprised. <laughs> I think it's fitting. I, I would go off of, I, I would say a Cinderella show would be my, my name game for that one, but it's kind of up to you guys. The, the, gl the glass slipper. <laughs> I like that's kind of cute. The glass slipper. I, yeah, no, I was totally but, but you know, you know, and going and going in that terms of things though, but can we call it the pearl necklace? Come on, you love it. <laughs> I, I, yep. I'm, yep. I'm not voting on it. <laughs> Bubbles. Could you possibly say that you were part of the pearl necklace? <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. Oh, I wouldn't. I would expect it would be. <laughs> Actually, as a matter of fact, just this morning. That happened. <laughs> How'd you go in? Uh <laughs> so this is your second pearl necklace of the day? <laughs> You lucky bitch. <laughs> you know what? I am good with it being the pearl necklace. Um, I was also down with the Cinderella theme. <laughs> but I think everybody deserves a little pearl necklace here and there. And <laughs> being as this is what, 180 <laughs> episodes in, sometimes pearls just need to take their time to develop and grow. Now, if we would have been at 169, it would have been even better. <laughs> Damn it, we're missing every mark. <laughs> hey, sometimes aim matters, right? It does. I don't know if you've ever had it in the eye, but it is not a pleasant experience. I, you know what? I haven't. 
Um, no, 10 out of 10 don't recommend. I've, I've also never had the opportunity. So like I've, I have purchased a few. I've just never worn them. So our hashtag Earl. Hashtag Brum necklace. <laughs> our inaugural the, the OG the inaugural pro necklace. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I think we hurt bubbles. <laughs> My insides hurt. It was the pearl necklace. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that was beautiful. The pearl necklace is Daddy Kong just walked into the office. <laughs> Three girls and one guy, and it takes a it, it takes a pearl necklace to end the show. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. oh my god! You get them bitches to shut up. Pearl necklace. Flush. No, that's how I make their stomachs hurt. Oh. Oh, no. Those aren't the kind of beads that make your stomach hurt. Oh. How big are the ones you're using? <laughs> the fact that all this happened on a Disney episode just makes it so much better. <laughs> I'm so oh, about to laugh again because I've already uh, accidentally like did the seal snort. <laughs> <laughs> Now we just need Andy on here with her chip Oh my god. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Okay. This is beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful pearl necklace hashtag. Uh, <laughs> the, the, inaug <laughs> the inaugural pearl necklace. The inaugural. Pearl necklace. You got to get it right because we're classy. <laughs> we're classy hoes. Pinky. Pinky's up. It's <laughs> exactly how I give my handies to. <laughs> oh, that little one. <laughs> Down there, down there to tickle the balls, and you have the top one just so you don't, you don't fall off. Uh, <laughs> on the wrist. It's all in the wrist. It's all in the wrist. Let me tell you what, those shape weights, they're very helpful. They're great Game for changer. purposes. <laughs> Speaking of game changers, Chai, where can people find you? Uh, you can uh, find me over on YouTube most nights of the week on the Sport Cat shows, or you can catch me on the radio uh, on Mondays and eventually sometime later on the Thin Line Rock Station. You can find Nancy at. Uh, you can find me over on uh, Dr. P.F. Jeremiah and his Infernal Roommate podcast and on our social medias. Um, and you, I don't have any other social media that I'm up for sharing with people as of right now, but come you are sitting here talking about pearl necklaces, so yeah, though no, I have, I come check out our podcast. Um, it's fun, it's a good time. It's uh, basically an interdimensional druid comes to comes to uh, our world, bent on, hell bent on world domination ends up running into a uh, professor, a film professor, or doctorate with entertainmentology, and they start a film podcast together. So it's a storytelling and movie review podcast, so come check us out. And of course, you can find Bubbles at...
You can find me right here, or occasionally you can find me in my pearl necklace on the TikTok. On the corner <laughs> by fourth. <laughs> She's got her stamp of approval waiting. <laughs> And I am your host, Rex Fisher. You can find me at that on Facebook. While you're on Facebook, check out Bracket Pastures. We have uh, Bracketology and Bracket Pastures. Bracketology, we have two polls going up every single day. Currently, it is the Dirty Destinations Bracket, where we have different town names from across the U.S. Later on, we will be doing an international version. Uh, as a flip side to that one, where the U.S. and the international will go head-to-head -head at the very end. But that's not going to happen for a while. The other one is the Bracket Bastards Championship that's going on as well uh on twitter you can find me at fisher 777 we're all at bracket bastards on instagram as always you can find me at can't lick me not one word next week we're doing I'm about to say we're doing william defoe we're doing a tournament sweet 16 of william defoe movies so uh keep in line for that one that is subject to change by the way because I've had a couple of guests fall fall through, so we may change it to something completely different. I'm I'm kind of hoping to um, not tell Q, have him on next week, and then do a Robin Williams bracket. Oh, <laughs> anyway. listen, I'm not not down. Um, so actually, sorry guys, because I have late late thoughts and stuff. Um, about like ladies being creepy i don't know if anybody's seen that netflix show uh baby reindeer but sometimes bitches be creepy so don't yep. be a creep <laughs> speaking of being creepy I, I i try to leave the show with a uh quote regarding to this one and this is from the late sometimes great and often extremely creepy uh walt disney laughter is timeless imagination has no age and dreams are forever that is our so show this week. <laughs> that is our show this week. I'm happy to oblige you guys in the pearl necklace fiasco on this one. We will see you next week. <laughs> Enjoy your time. Bastards out. Bye. Oh. It won't let me end the damn show. <laughs> We're on here forever.